students and families. I am Charity Norman. I am the Director of Welcome Programs here at Grand Canyon University and I am excited to officially welcome you to Lope Country for the 2021-2022 academic school year. Congratulations. This year at GCU will be my seventh, well, this is my seventh welcome week. We're in the midst of it right now. Um, I have been doing this since 2015. It is such a delight. It is such a joy to be able to create a welcoming environment for you and your family and to help you transition from your life pre-GCU to your life as a lope. It is, um, it's such a joy. I don't know what else to say. It's so wonderful to be able to be in front of all of you and to be able to walk with you through this process, to bring you up to this point, to help you prepare, to help you get involved. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about what Welcome Week is, what new student orientation is, what you can expect from this session and from the rest of the week, and then I will turn it over to the rest of the program. So. Welcome Programs is a department that serves you, the new students, and your families as you transition to GCU. And we do this through Welcome Week and Move In, which you all have experienced already or are going to experience later today, um, or perhaps later this week, and through the new student orientation process. So new student orientation, most of you started this process before you got here through the NSO online module. If you have not completed your module yet, please make sure to do so through your student portal before classes begin on Monday. We have a lot of information that will help you academically transition to GCU and teach you about our safety and wellness processes here at GCU and all of the ways that we care for you as a student at GCU. And you are invited to do this with your family if you've not done so already. The second part of New Student Orientation is where we are right now. It is the welcome session. So welcome again. Um, today, the welcome session is really designed to um, open up that door for you to walk through into your life as GCU. So it's, it is a meaningful commissioning for the incoming class and the support members or family members of the incoming class. So I'll talk a little bit more about today's schedule after, um, after this slide, but we're very excited to have you here and we're excited to continue walking with you through your orientation process. Then after today's session, our students will head out to orientation groups, or O groups as we call them. Um, these will be on the Prescott lawn. We will guide you and direct you on your way out. And parents will stay behind in the arena for the parent and family orientation session here. Y también ofrecimos un sesión español para padres y familias. After your new student orientation is complete and you are officially welcomed into the herd, then we continue to work with you through connection and transition initiatives. Um, my department will send the students a weekly email to tell you what it is that's going on here on campus. Um, we have 12 student leaders who work with our office called Welcome Pros, who are experts on connection and involvement here on campus. So at any point you have questions or um, you're having a hard time finding that right thing for you, please reach out to us. That is exactly what we're here for. Um, um, all of them are current GCU students who have been around the block a little bit and they have multiple different ways that they've gotten involved academically and with intramural sports and clubs and organizations and through life groups and worship and all kinds of ways. We have thousands of ways to get involved. So please reach out to us if you have any questions or there's any way that we can help you throughout your journey. 
And um, some of the ways that you can connect with us are this week we will be at the Welcome Programs pop-up booth which is in front of the student union on the promenade. It's a big purple tent that says welcome programs. So if you have any questions, then definitely feel free to stop by. New students, if you didn't attend a Discover um, and get your GCU t-shirt, then we emailed you a t-shirt voucher so you can stop by our tent and get your t-shirt this week as well. And uh, you can also call or text us. You can text this phone number. We do usually only answer between 8 and 5, um, but Welcome Week, we are a little slower to respond, but we respond later. So if you have any questions about anything at all, please shoot us a text, and we're happy to help you. And that goes for parents as well, and you can do that at any point throughout the semester. Um, our basic Welcome Week information is at gcu.edu slash welcome. So if at any point you need a refresher on the Welcome Week schedule or you need a refresher on the Welcome Week route map or you want to see a picture of the Welcome Pros, then you can head to gcu.edu slash welcome. And our office is actually located in Juniper Hall. Is anyone living in Juniper Hall? Holla, we're neighbors. Um, so we're in Juniper Hall. It's, number, it's building number 84. It's up at the Grove. So we're there. We're next to the Amazon lockers. You can stop in and say hi. We have lots of stickers and swag and would just love to meet you and have a conversation with you and, and serve you in whatever way that we can. So let me tell you a little bit more about the session that is upcoming for you. So first, we will invite Ben and Darian, our ASGCU president and vice president for the student body for the upcoming school year. And they're going to get to know you a little bit and tell you about what you can expect as a student here. Then after that, our president, Brian Mueller, will come and give a presidential address over you for this upcoming year. Then we will have the academic welcome by Dr. Sherman Elliott, who will help to set the stage for you to uh, succeed academically here at GCU. And finally, we will conclude with um, campus pastor Dr. Tim Griffin, who will come and chat about student life and campus involvement. Um, he will invite our diversity and inclusion director up as well. And then we will finish the afternoon or the morning, excuse me, with a new student commissioning. So without further ado, let me turn it over to Darian and Ben, and I will see you all in a bit. Thank you. Missed a step there. Good morning, GCU. Welcome to Loeb Country. We're so glad you're here. Um, like Charity said, my name is Darian Padilla, and I am this year's student body president. And my name is Ben Claypool, and I'm your student body vice president this year. And before we get started with our presentation this morning, we want to get to know you a little bit. So to get to know you, we want to figure out where everybody is living. So all at once, I want everyone to yell where they're living. Parents, please help your child um, yell it also. So, and I'm going to count it down. Three, two, one. Oh, gosh, that was, that was, you know where that they was live really now? good. I know where they live now. <laughs> Let, let's do it one more time, though, because it, it's a little fuzzy. So one, two, three. Yeah, that sounds that was, good to that me. Was, that was really good. All right, if you uh, have come from out of state, give me a big yell. Three. <laughs> they're eager this. They're nice. eager this morning. I love yeah. it. Um, if you are a transfer student. Three, two, one. Sorry. Okay. All right. Good. Awesome. Good. Awesome. And last one. If you're excited for a great upcoming school year. Awesome. Well, like I said, Ben and I are from an organization called ASGCU. ASGCU is your student government here on campus. So um, our big mission is really just to serve and advocate for you during your next three to four years while you're here on campus. Um, so today we just kind of want to tell you what it's going to be like to be a student while you're here. Yeah, alongside being here to welcome you guys to Lopeland because it's an awesome time to be here. Um, we we want to share some advice, some st a student's perspective. Per Okay, perspective on, on how to be a great student here at GCU. Yeah, so Ben and I both agree that the best way and the key to success here at GCU is to get connected soon and get connected across campus, whether that be through student government, like I did when I was a freshman. I joined our freshman mentorship program called Freshman Class Council, which you all have the opportunity to apply for starting today. 
But we also have a range of ways to get involved here on campus. We have over a thousand student worker jobs. We have some great organizations like ASGCU, also CAB, and local and global outreach that you can get involved in and earn scholarship while being a part of those. And also, we have over 150 clubs on campus that you can get involved in and really, really find a family here on campus. Yeah. So like I said, get connected soon, get connected often. Um, it really is truly the best way to make GCU feel like your new home. Um, take advantage of this week. There um, are booths all over campus. Find out what you're interested in and really plug into that um, because GCU is, more, is what you make it and there's opportunities out there for you to succeed. Um, so now I have the great and distinct pleasure of welcoming to the stage our university president, Mr. Brian Mueller. Welcome, everybody. It's good to see you. Charity had some great information for you, but she was also testing you. Things move very fast here, uh, and so to help you get ready for how fast they move, she just moved uh, the first day of class from Tuesday to Monday. I don't know if you heard that. You heard that? It's still Tuesday. It's still Tuesday. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, it, it's uh, a little overwhelming to see that this is new student orientation. I have to say that to you. Uh, 13 years ago when uh, we came here, uh, many of us came here, there were 900 students on campus, 900 total students on campus. Uh, and this year there are going to be almost 24,000 students on campus. And so... There was a great evangelist in the, in the late 1800s that, uh, that, that blew across the country. He was such a, and, and D.L. Moody used to say, if, if God is really going to be your partner, make your plans very big. That's kind of how I feel here. Um, this thing just keeps growing. This class we're unbelievably excited about. We're excited about every new class, but this class uh, is going to be 9,000 new students, and the average incoming GPAs of this class is going to be, for the first time, over 3.6. So, congratulations. <laughs> the, the quality of this student body keeps growing. It keeps growing. Our, our Honors College now has 2,800 students, and the average incoming GPAs of those students are over 4.1. And so we really now have the strongest student body in the state of Arizona, which we're very, very proud of. And I know our faculty can't wait uh, to start working with you. Just uh, three things uh, I'd like to say. One, um, our, our, our program, we have nine colleges now, 270 programs, and they keep growing. Um, and we have fa a fantastic set of deans and faculty, uh, but our programs are rigorous. Uh, they're not easy. Uh, they're difficult to go get through, get off to a great start. We have ACE centers throughout the campus. Uh, they're open uh, 12 hours, I think, a day. Uh, and so don't wait. Uh, many of you haven't been in, in school for a year because school was shut down last year. Uh, get off to a very quick start. Our faculty are anxious to work with you, are willing to work with you, want to work with you. They're, they're in their office a lot. Take advantage of their office hours, but get off to a really quick start from an academic standpoint. Secondly, and you'll hear a lot about this, get involved. Uh, we have the largest intramural program in the country, the largest club sports program in the country, music, theater, dance opportunities. We have great debate teams. Uh, if I line up 10 students and I say, why do you, did you choose Grand Canyon? What do you like best about the university? Almost every time, nine of them will say the same word. They'll say, we love the community that exists here. If you wander through our campus at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, on many campuses, it's dark, there's not much going on, this place is alive. The lights are on, the restaurants are open, intramurals are, are getting played, um, at club sports. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's just a very, very participative environment. And so get connected, start early. The third thing, probably the most important thing, um, which is the spiritual growth that, that happens for students when they're here for three or four years. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of opportunities. Uh, chapel on Monday morning, uh, we'll have over 7,000 students here. If you haven't heard our chapel, our worship band, 
uh, perform, play, lead you in worship. Uh, it's, a, it's an unbelievable experience. Parents, if you're around, you're welcome. If you haven't heard 7,000 students sing a, at the same time, that's a real, real special experience. And so uh, take advantage of that. You'll hear about the gathering on Tuesday nights. There are Bible studies led by our student leaders in the dorms all, all week long. But probably the most important thing that's become part of who we are is that we're very, very proud to be in this neighborhood. Uh, it's a neighborhood of immigrants. There are 45 different languages that get spoke within uh, four or five square miles of here. Uh, people have come from all over the world, literally, from Africa, from Central America, from Mexico. They settled in this neighborhood uh, and they need help. And we think God has put us in this place at this time to be a blessing to this neighborhood. And it just seems like the more, thank you. It seems like the more we bless the neighborhood, the more God blesses us. And it just, it, it, it just seems like it works that way. There's gonna be a tremendous amount of opportunities for you to get involved with outreach. Um, we have a five point plan that I won't go into detail about, but we're, we're about creating jobs. We've created 14,000 jobs here. We have started 10 new businesses that have created another 500 jobs. It's really important you get a, a, an immigrant family a job because they have a salary, they have benefits, and then they have, can send their kids to, to college for nearly free, which really can change the future of the, of the family. So that's the first two parts. The, the third part is safety. We've made huge progress. Our campus is safe because we have our own police force here and you have to go by a guard to get on. Um, and we're making, but we're making great strides in the neighborhood in a partnership with the city of Phoenix police. And we're just gonna keep working on that. The fourth thing is homes. We have the largest Habitat for Humanity program in the world going on in this neighborhood. You'll get a chance to participate in that through a thing called Serve the City. Uh, but we've rehabbed 360 homes. Our goal's 800, we'll get 800 done and housing values are up over 400% in this neighborhood since we started that program. And the fifth thing is a lot of kids in our neighborhood uh, don't have parents that have graduated from high school, uh, much less college. They can't help with algebra. So we have a giant tutoring program that goes on every day from three to eight. That's led to a scholarship program. We have 1,200 kids that are providing um, tutoring every day between three and eight, 10 o'clock and six o'clock on Saturday. And it's made a huge impact on, on this neighborhood and what kids believe is possible in terms of their future. For, so. Lots of opportunity. I want to go uh, just describe one more thing because we need your help. We're starting something new this year called the Lopes Academy. Um, it, it is a program that was designed by our, our, uh, human, our uh, Humanities and Social Sciences Dean Sherman Elliott, who you will hear from. Uh, a gentleman who's a big developer in Arizona came to us. He has an intellectually disabled child who is now college age. And he said, you know, my, my daughter uh, and some of my friends' uh, uh, daughters and sons can't go to college the way you guys can go to college, but they still want to be part of a university. They want to be part of a community. So you, could you develop a program? And so we did, and it starts this year. It's a two-year program. The students are going to come twice a week. Um, they are going to be led through. They're going to go to class. They're going to have their own classroom, which is uh, their, their homeroom. Um, they're going to attend chapel, they're going to attend basketball games, they're going to become part of the Lope community. And then after two years, hopefully what has happened is they'll be prepared to take a job on our campus and join the community. We need buddies. Um, a buddy is a GCU student, a GCU student who's willing to work with one of these students uh, for, for the entire year. Uh, it means meeting them when they arrive on campus, making sure they get to their classroom, uh, um, helping them get to chapel, uh, maybe sitting with them at a basketball game. Um, but we're excited about this program because it gives us a chance to include more people as part of this community. And so if you have any interest in doing that, you can get, in, you can get information on that uh, uh, in the Student Life Building. So again, welcome. Thank you for being here. This is going to be an unbelievable year for GCU. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Is it a good day so far? Yeah, we're blessed to have you. You know, I looked it up last night because I couldn't remember my Latin. It's been a few years. And I always think of the word student as a noun. But student actually originally with the Romans and then later on in the Middle Ages, you can tell I'm one of the deans, right? 
was a verb, and it meant apply yourself. Apply yourself. So when you go to class, the question is, are you going to apply yourself? You've worked hard to get here. Your parents have worked hard to get you here. Grandparents, friends, they've all been a part of you coming here and blessing us with your presence. We want you to apply yourself. And it's not just about the classroom. It's everything around the classroom. Professors work here because they love to teach. They love to minister here. They want you to come to their offices, whether it's virtual or face-to-face. Go to office hours, ask questions, get to know them, apply yourself. We also have a lot of centers, a lot of activities that are going on surrounding academics, guest speakers, clubs, honor societies. We also have a math, writing, and English language learner center. It's open all week, eight to five. It's part of your tuition, it's part of your program. Go in any time, any issue, any question. You can even go in just to volunteer. Apply yourself. When you think about the experience here, we also want to be balanced, right? It's about academics. It's about discovering the essence of who you are. You know you can get through school. That's why you're here. But are you ready for the next level? College is a little different than high school because no longer is the teacher just standing by you saying, here, do this, fill out this rubric, follow my template. Now the professor is turning to you and saying, what do you think this ought to be? What might this look like in your mind? What do you want your world to look like? You'll be taking care of me in the future. I'm counting on it. Right? Apply yourself. We have also something called Lopes Lives Labs. And what I love about this, Dr. Gibb, our business dean, helped to create this, is we're trying to showcase all over the campus things where it's very tactile. You're using your hands. It's experimental. Right? Whether it's an engineering lab, a 3D printing lab, an innovation lab, the cadaver lab if you're pre-med. All of these places are an opportunity for you to apply yourself. But please think about your whole person, right? Mind, body, and spirit. So we've talked about the mind, your body. You know we have club sports, it's phenomenal. We have an unbelievable CAC. We've got gyms everywhere. They seem to be ubiquitous. Walking the campus is just fantastic. Yoga classes, spin classes, you name it. Apply yourself. And finally, your spirit. I personally believe, truly, the Holy Spirit sent you here. So now we want to see what that looks like. We want to get to know you. Join Bible study. Go to chapel. If you end up connecting with an off-campus community, that nourishes your spirituality, amen, that's fantastic. Apply yourself. Please don't be shy. Professors want to get to know you. The colleges want to get to know you. Go to every event you possibly can. Some you'll love. Some you'll think they're boring. Even the boring is okay. So now, this is the, your first quiz. I'm hoping that something was learned here. What are you going to do? Are you going to... Thank you very much. Look forward to meeting you. Well, good morning. It is so wonderful to look out across this arena and see such smiling and happy faces. I hope you've had a great experience so far. Yeah, good, good. My wife and I sent uh, two sons through here and they met their spouses here, and now they're giving us little mini lopes. <laughs> and so I want to encourage you to be very friendly and warm and engaging uh, while you're on campus, especially you uh, parents, because you don't know who you might spend Thanksgiving with this year. <laughs> Anything's possible, and that was a bit of a nervous laugh, so I'll move on. Uh, we have a lot of things to offer you new students uh, through Student Affairs. It is our uh, responsibility outside the classroom to provide for you uh, those kinds of experiences that will engage you, will develop you, and hopefully see you graduate from here in the very near future. So if there's anything that we're not doing in Student Affairs to support you as a student at GCU, please let us know. 
We're trying to create a robust experience for you um, inside the classroom and outside the classroom. Now, um, one of my jobs here is to be campus pastor. When I first came to GCU, that was my, my original position. And uh, shortly after that, they asked me to take on other roles. So I want to spend just a moment to encourage you about spiritual formation and the opportunity that you have at GCU. We are a Christian university, and we make no apologies for that. But we don't make, yeah, thank you. Now, unlike a lot of universities, we don't mandate any attendance and involvement in any of those activities. However, we want to encourage you uh, to be a part. You will find uh, very soon, if you're a new student and you've not been around campus very much, that it is a, an enormous part of our culture. We are a student-led campus, and that's really important for you to know, that our students uh, take ownership of many dimensions of the university and campus and culture that we provide here for students when they come to Grand Canyon. When it comes to spiritual formation, it is student leaders who lead those Bible studies in the residence halls. It is student leaders who lead from the stage that uh, student experience on Mondays and Tuesday nights for students to participate in a community worship experience. We are a student-led campus. And so if this is something that is uh, familiar to you, please plug in. That first chapel service will be the Monday following the first week of school, and this arena will be packed, so get here early. Uh, there will be check-in for some of our students who take chapel as a class and for those who are student leaders, but if you are a student here and you are just interested, you don't have to check in, you just come and visit and enjoy that experience. The same thing is true on Tuesday nights. We meet in uh, the Antelope Gym, which is also referred to as the South Gym. It's in the North Gym classroom complex on the other side of the soccer stadium. That's a Tuesday night experience that usually goes to from one service to two services uh, shortly after we begin those on Tuesday evenings. Next Tuesday night, uh, after parents go home this week and students are here to start the first week of school, that Tuesday night, the Tuesday night after Labor Day Monday, we will have a huge welcome to worship here in the arena. Again, I would encourage you to get here early. We'll talk about all the spiritual formation opportunities that are provided for you around campus and off campus. And uh, hopefully you will be here to share uh, in that experience together. Now, for those of you that may not be a part of your tradition and you're curious, you have questions, please find a, a staff member, a, a student leader, and uh, we will do our very best to answer the questions that you might have if you're curious about how we go about spiritual formation, spiritual life on campus, how we serve in the community. So with that said, I want to introduce to you Donald Glenn. Donald Glenn leads our uh, uh, diversity and inclusion office and he's going to share a few words with you this morning so would you give him a warm uh, round of applause please thank you thank you thank you dr tim uh something about the diversity and inclusion office is it's really just a wonderful thing to be able to engage students from various backgrounds uh, on a regular basis my job here at Grand Canyon is really simple, to serve, support, and educate the students, faculty, staff at, at, at the university. <clears throat> and we have been charged with a great opportunity to create spaces for conversation, uh, to have uh, spaces or opportunities for inclusion, awareness, and to address uh, the various student concerns uh, that students may have regarding diversity, inclusion, multiculturalism. And I could share with you all of the wonderful uh, experiences that I've had, the various events that we host, different culture celebrations that we have every month, um, the various awareness and inclusion events that we have, uh, our Culture Fest, which is our biggest event of the year that represents uh, many of the 80 plus countries that are represented in our student body. But one of the things that uh, brings me passion is to help people find a center, uh, a our, which is our foundation, 
uh, and our, our theme this year really speaks to that, which is the image of God. We know that God has created us with all of these wonderful differences and different backgrounds and upbringings, and we celebrate that. But there is one thing that brings us together, and that is our commonality that we find in Christ, that we all have been, been created in the image of God. And so this year, through our programming and through all of the conversations that we, we have, before we focus on anything else and any of these differences, which we do celebrate, as I have said, uh, we want to make sure that as we are approaching a brother or a sister, that we're approaching them first as, a, as God's creation. And so when we address them, we will address them with love and with honor and with respect. And that's the kind of community that we have here at GCU. It's something that I, when I came here, I was simply just amazed because of how diverse this space is. And so your students, as they continue throughout uh, the various programming that, that, that they will get introduced to uh, throughout the semester, uh, you're going to hear stories of, I met this person and they're from this country and it's just a beautiful thing to be able to see it happen with my own eyes on a day-to-day -day basis. And so thank you so much for your time. And if you have any questions, you know, you are always welcome to stop by our office, which is in the Student Life Building, Building 26. We'll be happy to meet you, greet you, because at GCU, you're not just welcomed, you are wanted. We want to know you, we want to meet you. So with that, God bless you, and I look forward to meeting you soon.
How fun was that? So there are a lot of students here just like you. So you will make friends, you will have great experiences this year, and we're excited that you're here. For this portion of the orientation, please take out the pen that was handed to you as you entered. If you've misplaced it, please get the attention of a student leader who can provide you a replacement. We have uh, student leaders making their way around the arena now, so just slip your hand up and they'll make sure that you get a pen. A commissioning is the act of granting certain powers or the authority to carry out a particular task or duty, to authorize or engage someone to do something. Today, it is my honor to commission you into our student body here at GCU. Student, family members, friends, student leaders and staff, these new students have been called to their educational journey at GCU. The call as students is to obtain knowledge and skills through experience and study. Ultimately, we are all called to lifelong learning. New students, please stand and remain standing if you are able. Students, as a member of the GCU community, you are challenged to become a global citizen, a critical thinker, an effective communicator, and a responsible leader. In pursuit of these attributes, you are challenged to learn about the Christian worldview, practice empathy, and embrace the reality that people are different and that by understanding others, we learn to understand ourselves. You will be challenged to learn to communicate proficiently and to understand how your words impact others emotionally and intellectually. You agree to strive toward a path of leadership and influence, exercising unselfishness and working toward a world that seeks solutions instead of problems. Students, do you commit to pursuing these qualities which are the foundation of the culture here at Grand Canyon University? If so, answer, we do. GCU student family and friends, please stand and remain standing if you are able. Family and friends, do you promise to support your student as they learn about the Christian worldview and their role in global citizenship, critical thinking, effective communication, and servant leadership? If so, answer, we do. <laughs> Students, please hand your pens to a family member, friend, or staff member near you. May this pen be a sign as a representation of you becoming a member of the GCU student body. Family and friends and staff, please carefully pin the student near you. Today, we recognize GCU values, the student and family commitment, and the importance of the valuable student experience here at GCU. Students accept this important role. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, how we thank you for these brand new GCU students. Thank you for their families and their friends who have come to support them today in this experience. God, we pray your blessings on them as they make their way through GCU and their academic journey here. May you shower them with your blessings and your grace and your mercy. May you lead them and draw them close to you. God, bless them as they go about the rest of this week and prepare for the start of school next week. We look forward to a great semester and a great year, and we trust you for all this, for we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. We hereby, before you cheer, we hereby officially commission you as a member of the GCU student body and welcome you to the community. Congratulations. How do you feel? Um, 
Well, I am going to tell you all what is coming up next for you. So you can have a seat. Um, students, in a few minutes, we are going to dismiss you to your orientation groups. We will be dismissing you by your living area. Um, so first, there will be a few slides, a few living area slides that pop up. If you see your building there, then you are dismissed. We'll wait a few, a few moments, and then we will dismiss the next round. So everybody will get a chance to leave. We are just not going to do a swarm all the way at the end. Um, parents, hang out here in the arena and the parent and family orientation will begin at 10.15, so you have a little bit of a break time. Um, and in Spanish, la sesión de padres y familias empezará a las 10 y 15 al lado de arena. Por favor, manténganse en sentado mientras despedimos a sus estudiantes. Después pueden salir por el lado de pasillo a la izquierda. Okay, parents and families, welcome back. For those of you, if we didn't meet in the first session, my name is Charity Norman. I am the director of Welcome Programs here. And I will tell the parents, just because it's parents today, that um, I, I am not a parent of a college student. I am a parent of a four and a half year old girl. Um, she is awesome. And um, sitting in here with the parent presentation, which many of you will hear from other parents of actual college students today, um, I know that I'm going to be there very shortly. So, in a couple of years, in, in the blink of an eye, I am going to harken back to these times and remember the valuable information that I, that I, as a parent, learned here today about what to expect when my daughter goes off to college. So, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for participating with us in the student commissioning, um, for letting your students go for the time being and go make some friends. You'll be able to meet up with them in a little bit. So I'm gonna walk you through the run of schedule here today. First, obviously, we're at parent and family orientation. So the first thing is you will learn a little bit more about parent and family programs from our parent family programs coordinator, Robin Horde. She will come and chat with you about what your new relationship with the university looks like and give you some tips as a parent of a couple of college students and, well, one college student and one graduate. She'll fact check me if I'm incorrect, but I think that's right. Um, Yes, I'm right. Thanks, Robin. And uh, after that, she will kick it over to the safety and wellness section, where you will hear from public safety and student care to learn all of the ways that Grand Canyon University is working very, very hard to keep your students safe and well, physically, emotionally, mentally. Um, we care very, very deeply for your students, and so we want to explain to you um, how we do that. And then last, we will talk, not last, excuse me, next, we will talk about living in community. Most of you here are parents of resident students, so we will hear from one of our managers of residence life, and they will talk about what it looks like to live in community for your student and how you can partner with us in that way and best support your student as they are figuring out their new community. Then we will talk through academic and career excellence and the transition between your university admissions counselor who you've been working with very closely or your student has been working with very closely and that transition to a student services counselor who will serve your student while they are enrolled in classes here at GCU and what some of the differences are that you can expect in that relationship between yourselves and the university. And then we will end with a parent panel which will be led by Robin. So without further ado, I will kick it over to Robin here. Thank you very much, and I will see you all in a bit. Oh yeah, I always forget about this guy. Thank you, Charity. Listen, I want you all to stand up and put your hands together for that lovely woman right there, Charity Norman, because every year, Every year since 2015, I don't know if you know this about GCU, but the content here is change. And so each year, she gets a new gift, and it's called a new campus map. And not only does she get this campus map, but she has to figure out new routes on how to get thousands of more students into buildings, two, if not four, more buildings a year in the same amount of time. So this is your first time moving in, so just every year when you're like, why don't we know our move-in day? Well, 
there's buildings being built, and we're figuring out how to do it. So it's not like other universities where they can just take out the old notebook and open up the page to the spreadsheet from last year and white out the page and change the date. No. It's a whole new three binder, three hole punch notebooks that go across her bookshelf. So Charity, great job. Orientation, move in, all the things, that's, that's your gal. All right, well parents and families, my name is Robin Horde and I get the delight of serving you all and ultimately serving your student as your parent family programs coordinator. So I would love to get to know you a little bit. I told Tim as he left, I'm like, Tim, you asked all the questions that I ask them. He goes, well, sucks for you, I went first. So I'll ask you a little bit similar, but a little bit different. So would you please stand up again? And I wanna find out where you're all from. All right, so my homies from Arizona, if you, oh, 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 we got some in the front row. I would like you to just go ahead and have a seat. I know, I know, but I'm gonna watch. There's, there's like literally six of you. Okay, see, so we gotta meet our people from, from far and wide. All right, so if you, I'm, I'm gonna go by time zone here. So let's just start on the very, very east side. So Eastern time zone. If that's what you connect with, yep, go ahead and have a seat. I'm going to watch. Okay, a few more, not, 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 not more, not too many more than us. All right, so let's come a little bit further west central time zone. Where am I central time? There we go. Okay, excellent, good. A little bit further mountain, mountain time. Some Colorado, right? Yes. Okay, PST, look at you all. This is, are you guys all Pacific Standard Time? Let's go, have a seat. Excellent. Listen, that's my favorite time zone because that's the time zone that I grew up in. I grew up in Eugene, Oregon. My husband grew up in Bothell, Washington. So PNW in the house, let's go. Seahawks, anybody? Sorry, sorry, I know, I know. I'm sorry, we can still love one another. Listen, listen, all right, perfect. Um, everyone stand up one more time. I promise this will be the last time. Because this is important. So Tim did ask you this question. So for those of you that this is your very first time going through sending a student off to university, I would like you to, to remain standing. Everyone else, if this is not your first rodeo, have a seat. You've been here. You've done it. All right, everybody, put your hands together again for these lovely souls. Yeah. It's a big deal. All right, everybody have a seat. Thank you so much for playing along. We're not, we're not as cool with the screen and the phones because we're 20th century people. Um, I know, we're old. Um, but my husband and I, I'll shoot up our picture here in a hot second. Um, we're with you in 2017 with our very first born and then two years ago with our second born. Um, so anyway, my name, like I mentioned, is Robin and I get to work alongside the lovely Cheryl Ann Galdi. You'll meet her in a little bit, but she is the director of annual giving and is celebrating her first year here in just 20 days. I'm celebrating seven years tomorrow, which is crazy. Um, in GCU years, that's like a million. Um, but the first four years I spent in residence life as a student conduct coordinator. In the last three years, I've had the joy of being in this role. So here is my sweet family. Uh, Scott and I have been married for almost 26 years and have three children. So Sam, as Charity mentioned, um, Samantha, graduated in December. So we were not able to be here in the arena for that event. We got to watch from home, <laughs> from our couch. Uh, thank you, Corona. So she graduated in graphic design, graphic, yeah, graphic design and advertisement. And then Ryan is 20. Um, he is returning next week. I'll talk about both of them a little bit more in my presentation so you get to know them a little bit. But he's coming back and studying film. And then my third born, Jaden, is a sophomore in high school. So I'll be coming back and having dual roles in three years, because he told us this week that, yeah, I think I'll go to GCU. Good choice, good choice, buddy. Uh, so there's my family, love them a lot. And I like them too, which is helpful. Um, so parent family programs, really everything that we do stems out of these four values. 
We pray for our students, we care for our students, we serve as a phenomenal example of Christ, and we also give. So I want to start out just by sharing a little bit about prayer, because that's the most important thing that we can do for our students. And that was the first thing that I worked on to create what we call Lope Family Groups. So there's a few of you in the audience. I met and saw Randy McFarland from Texas. Is Jen Tangle in here? Is she in the house? Jen? Today's her birthday, and she's from Santa Barbara, so I was going to give her a special shout-out. Um, if you see Jen from Santa Barbara, happy birthday, Jen. Um, but we have about 70 groups all the way east of New Hampshire, all the way west out to Hawaii. Um, and GCU parents come together and pray. Um, you'll meet Todd Forrest a little bit later today on our panel. He writes a monthly devotion. Pastor Tim, who you already met, sends me each month um, a prayer request of how we can be praying for the university, the administration, and the student body. And then I send that out to all of my facilitators each month as you gather in homes or in a coffee shop. Some people meet in churches. So check out those. You can sign up today out of the Parent Family Program's tent. There's sign-ups in the newsletter every month. September's newsletter is going to hit your inboxes next Tuesday. I delayed that because we're kind of busy this week. Um, so watch for that. Um, we also care for our students. But we we care for them a little bit differently than we have the past 18 years, right? When Scott and I were sitting where you guys are four years ago, we just were kind of looking at each other going, oh gosh. I mean, we literally said out loud, we haven't read books on this one. You know, we, we read books about the infancy and training the kiddos on how to eat and sleep and all of those things. And then the toddler trenches, right? It's just dreaded. Oh, my gosh. And then they learn to lie when they're five and all these things, right? And you manage and it seems like there's all of these resources. But then when you get to these years and they're young adults and everyone keeps saying they're adults, they can make their own decisions. But then as parents, we're going, yeah, but they're fresh out and they don't have a clue as to what they're doing. And they still do need us, right? But it's different. And so I've really been describing as we've really got to be light on our feet and kind of ebb and flow with when they need us and, and really when they don't. And to be okay with both of those, which is sometimes hard and quite frankly, exhausting. And so I did find a book. Um, I'm going to show it to you really quick. It's called You're on Your Own, But I'm Here If You Need Me. So for the very first time, we did a book club over the summer. And so if that's something that you would like to be a part of, let me know. Um, come and see me at the tent. There'll be um, information that I'll put up on our Facebook page and those sorts of things. But, man, when I found that, I was like, wish I had that in 2010 to start preparing. But I'm still learning things and utilizing a lot of the things I learned this summer with my 22, 20, and almost 16-year-olds. So we also serve, hopefully, um, you received an email that I sent out about mid-July on ways that you can volunteer, be back on campus, even volunteer and serve from home. Because um, I think it's just a phenomenal way for us to showcase who we are as believers and really model that for our students. And then give. So this is where I'm going to invite Cheryl Ann to come up on stage and just share a little bit more about how you can partner with us um, in that endeavor. Because quite frankly, you guys are our most important partner here at the university. Because there's no one that loves their student more than you do. And we want to make sure that we partner with you in everything that we do here so that they can really thrive and be successful. Hi, it's so great to see so many people here. As Robin said, I am a GCU parent as well. On Monday, my son was sitting right there. I pinned him just like you did today. And just we're fighting back tears at every single orientation because we're, we are you. We are you. We understand that you are leaving a piece of yourself here, a piece of your heart here. And even though we're local, and some of you are local too, we're going home and our lope is not there. So it doesn't matter how far or how close you are, they're still gonna blow you off. So. <laughs> so like Robin said, there are a million ways to get involved at GCU. Right now, your students are out there, they're getting connected, they're making friends, they're getting involved in sports and all kinds of things. There's ways for you to do that too. So one of those ways, and what I'm here to talk about today is philanthropy. 
So Brian Mueller was here and gave a great address, and he said that our kids are the smartest kids to ever come through here. Round of applause for yourselves. Yeah. All that homework that we had to learn how to do, that's all new in high school since we haven't been there since um, 1987. But all different, right? So they're out there. We have so many things that our kids are going to be doing. Because they're smart, they are going to be successful. I mean, nobody's walking in here thinking they're not going to be successful. The kids are walking in, they're like, I got it, I got it. I mean, engineers, nurses, I mean, think about the coursework they're doing. They're going to be successful. And with that comes travel to conferences, travel to competitions, which they're all going to win, by the way, we know, right? So when we talk about philanthropy, Brian Mueller, he's got the buildings, he's got the, the equipment, everything you see at GCU here is all taken care of, right? But where we need your help with philanthropy is to provide the extra, extra stuff for the kids. So they want to travel to these competitions and, and we want to be able to give them as many bus rides as, as they need to go anywhere and just kill it, right? And then also he talked about this community. And so we have the initiatives that um, help the community here. One of them is the Students Inspiring Students program. And we have learning lounges. And those kids from the neighborhood who never, ever thought they would go to college, they say this big, intimidating place and don't think they'd be able to come here. And then they go to the learning lounge, and there's someone like them tutoring them who did it from their own neighborhood. It's a cycle of success. And they, then they start to think, oh, I can do it too. And then they do better and better in their academics. And then GCU, through donations, is allowed to give them a full scholarship. And then they, they come back and they fulfill wonderful things in their community. So that's a great program. And Brian also talked about CityServe. So CityServe, we get a truck is worth about $60,000 worth of just basic needs goods. And what we pay for that to be able to give it away is only $3,000. It's crazy how we can fulfill as Christians a mission of helping people for this much. For just that much so we need your help with that too so thank you so much for being here um who likes coffee sweet who likes water that was a trick question you should all be drinking water in arizona yes so i want to have coffee with you if you're local let's go to let's go right here on campus if you're not local i'm originally from the east coast i'm a jersey girl Hey, any time zone, we could do Zoom coffee. I want to get to know you. I want to get to know your lobe, what's important to you. And let's just connect, okay? So have a wonderful time today. You are making memories. Moms, you know that baby book that you started, that you bought when you were pregnant? We're filling those back pages now. It's crazy that we're here. But we are here, and it's wonderful. You did such a great job getting them here. So have a wonderful time on campus. And God bless you, and have a safe trip home, because a lot of you are not from here. So thank you so much for your time. Listen, I don't care if you're local. I still want to have coffee with you. There's three local family groups in Hawaii. Let's go, Sherilyn. Seattle, Seahawks game. I mean, come on. Um, we'll make it happen. So that is what Parent Family Programs is all about. So next thing I want to talk about, I'm going to meddle a tiny bit. ABCs of parenting. Listen, I'm a bottom line girl. Scott and I, we've been married for 26 years. He is the one who uses all the words. I'm the one that just gets right to the point. Sometimes I'm just like, babe, can, can we just go to the mailbox? Do we, can we not go around the house this time? Just take me straight there. What, what do you need to tell me? So as I was preparing and praying two years ago, um, for the first ever parent family orientation, I really felt like the Lord gave me these ABCs. And so, A, I want you as parents, as you partner with us, and as you're really in this new kind of realm of parenting your young adult, to be available to them and not annoying. Now, what do I mean? Sometimes, you know, we can, we can really want to hear from our children right away because they have this lovely device that we have purchased for them, most of us, and we know that they can see that I texted you. So you should text back right away. Well, 
they're going to be busy. They're going to be going to Lopapalooza and doing all of these fun, crazy things in their new normal here on campus. And so if they don't text back right away or respond, that's okay. And you maybe even celebrate that. Because if they do right away, you might think, oh gosh, are, are you doing all right? Now don't worry if they do. That's okay too. Don't be like, oh no, you responded too quickly. Don't worry. But it's just that great balance, right? of making sure that you're maybe saying, oh my gosh, this morning I just woke up, you're really on my heart, I'm praying for you today, have a great day. And just leave it at that. Or even, I know you've got a test this week, um, thinking of you, maybe we can connect on Sunday um, before you have to write that paper that's due at midnight. Because assignments are due at midnight on Sundays, just so you know, here at GCU. So that's A, so keep that in mind. B, believe in them. Like I said earlier, there's no one on this planet that loves your student more than you do. Cheer them up, champion them. We've been on this planet a long time. So we've lived a lot of life, and so of course we know things that they don't really know yet. And so they're gonna have to walk through a lot of things that we already have. So don't belittle them when they might call home and, and tell you a story about something that they did. Sometimes, more often than I'd like to admit, I want to say things like, why, why did you do that? Why, why did that even cross your mind as an option? They're 18, you know? And so instead, it's almost you want to invite them to back up a little bit, look at that larger picture and say, huh, I'm so curious. And just ask some of those open-ended questions. What if you would have, and maybe next time when your roommate says, what if you stated this or asked this way? And then what are they going to do? They're going to feel much more confident, realize, wow, mom and dad are pretty smart. I kind of want to access some of that wisdom that they have. And they're going to call more often and get that from you because they're, they're hearing that you believe in them. You trust them. You're coming alongside them. And then finally, C, this is hard for me, um, communicate, don't control. It's so hard, right? I, I've asked this question the last two days, so I'm curious for this crowd. Moms especially, who, who could have packed their student in about half the time that it took? Yeah, I know. I know. And, and what, I see you, Dad. I see you. And I'm so sorry, but you've made it. Is your student moved in? Praise God. Good job. Yeah. Literally, I, I, my 15-year-old, I mean, third-borns, right? They're just whack a little bit anyway. Um, he packed himself for uh, church camp. He was up in Oregon. Anybody know where Eagle, Eagle Fern is? Anybody? Oh my, my Corval, Laura, we just need to be friends, okay? Yes, okay, I love this. Um, so he goes up to Eagle Fern for a week. I, I don't remember where I was. I wasn't even home and he's packing. And so I'm calling Scott and I'm like, he's packed? I mean, does he have enough clothes? He has at least two pair of jeans, at least, you know, all the things. He's like, Robin, he did great. He even rolled up his clothes like you have done so many times in little daily rolled up, you know, outfits. And I'm like, okay, he's going to be okay. But it's really hard for me, right? So sometimes it's really difficult to not just do things for them. But it's just like we talked about with the belittling and the believing. You've got to know that they can do it. And again, that's building them up so that when they do cross this stage three, three and a half, four years from now, they're going to be ready to go. So I'm going to tell you a couple of stories about my own kiddos um, when they were here. So Sam, um, the one that just graduated, she started her freshman year in 2017. She lived out in Ironwood. Anybody out in Ironwood? Yes, let's go. Um, and she, she acquired something the summer before she came to campus while working at Chick-fil-A. Not just great, you know, experience of earning a good wage, she acquired a boyfriend. I wasn't thrilled because I knew that this boy was not going to ever be part of my family. I just knew, right? Moms, we just know. And he never made it into my phone. I never remember his name. I always just refer to him as Joe because I always forget his name. And so sweet Joe is really distracting my daughter because he didn't leave. It wasn't just a cute little summer thing. It like continued, right? Like, oh my gosh, here we go. So we move her in and at this time I'm working in Res Life and I know all the phenomenal things that Res Life has to offer my introvert daughter to get out of her shell. 
Well, guess what? Sweet Joe does not go to school here and lives off campus. And so who continues to leave campus? My girl. Thanks, Joe. So do I, <laughs> am I annoying, belittling, and controlling? Oh, I want to be. So badly. And there might be times if Sam were standing, she's like, Mommy, you sure were. Um, but I tried not. I didn't make her break up with sweet Joe or, you know, do all these things. But my little heart was just sad because I knew she was missing out on some things. Now, however, fast forward to the end of her freshman year, she comes home one day and she says, Mom, um, I think I'm going to break up with Joe. You guys, I know, thank you. Yeah, I had to so control myself to not like do a toe touch in the middle of our family room, but I, I didn't, I didn't. I said, oh my gosh, okay, well, you know, do you, do you want to talk about it? No? Well, when, 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 when are you going to break up with him? Just roughly. Today. Okay, today. Okay. I'll be here. So she leaves and she goes off and I immediately call Scott. Yeah, it's happening today. Yes. Today, it's today. So then she comes home and she's weepy and teary and doesn't really want to talk about it then. But about a, a, uh, maybe about three days after, we end up going to Chipotle. Yes, love. And um, we talk about Joe and the year and things that had transpired and things that kind of hurt my heart about her freshman year. And she learned a lot. And if I had intervened, all of those things that we were discussing, we wouldn't have had that opportunity to discuss. So I tell you that story because sometimes it's going to be very hard to watch your students do things that you know very well are not best in our minds, but they're going to walk and journey and learn and come out the other side and learn things. So today she is dating a very nice young man that is in my phone and that I believe is going to be Sam's husband and my son-in-law. So hang in there if you've got a Joe in your life. So Ryan, yeah, hang in there. We can talk, we can talk later at the tent. <laughs> um, now Ryan, on the other hand, he, he came to campus two years later. Um, Acacia? Anybody in Acacia? There we go. All right. So right across from Ironwood, same out in the Grove. And so the end of his freshman year, he received the gift of coronavirus and got an early move out. And a lot of you here today, you know very well what sweet COVID-19 kind of did, wreaked some havoc on some really phenomenal experiences that were taken away from our students. And that caused a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety that our young adults, was hard to manage. So Rai moved home, we got through summer, he's coming back his sophomore year and he's commuting, but at GCU, as probably a lot of your schools blended, right? A lot of online learning, coming into class, everyone's in masks, you know the thing. And so about halfway through October, he um, pulled Scott and I aside in his room and said, you know, I'm really not doing well. In fact, I've had a couple of panic attacks and this, I'm just not managing well, I'm failing classes and I really think that I need to withdraw. Again, I want to control, right? And I just wanna say, just we, just, we just get through it, right? We just, we just do what we have to do. And I say, okay, but I, I don't, I don't say that. Um, I say, let's revisit this in a few days. And thank you for sharing. And we talk it through. And three days later, you know, no, I'm not going to be able to pull it through and even finish out this semester. So we enter into a season where um, he's getting a lot of counseling because we really want to make sure that he has the tools in his toolbox to be able to deal with stress, to be able to deal with anxiety. Hopefully, we're not always going to have a global pandemic right with us, right here. Um, but fast forward to April, um, and he, he's been doing his counseling, and we're doing great, and we're, we're looking at, you know, next steps for him, dreaming some dreams, and um, it's commencement week, and I'm standing right at the top of this this staircase right here, um, straightening up tassels, straightening up cords as they come down, and I'm getting text messages from Ryan, and, and we're not doing good. We're not doing good. And about two days later, we end up having him admitted into a behavioral health hospital. And um, you guys, I'm feeling the emotions today. I've done this for two days, but today it's rough. Um, 
And he was, I, where's Laurel? I think it's because I saw Laurel. <laughs> Where are you, Laurel? There you are. I'm just going to look at you. Um, and he was there for eight days. And I got to tell you, those were some, they were. They were the toughest eight days as a mom. Um, having your kiddo somewhere where you can't access them, hug them, and give them what you really think that they need, but you know, you know that they're exactly where they need to be. Um, but he, he's out. You guys, I'm going to skip to the good part. He's coming back next week. And I want you to know, too, he gave me permission to share. Um, he gave me permission to share. Because this is a really hard time developmentally. Kristen's going to talk about this in a little bit. Um, especially our young men, I think. You know, really be attentive, be aware um, of what they're going through. And I'm so grateful that we have such a phenomenal and robust student care department here at GCU to come alongside our students, especially in this season, not just as young adults, but with what we're dealing with globally. So I just, I share that to encourage you. Um, it's, it's, it's hard, but man, we are in this together. And my Lope family group that Scott and I have led, we're coming on to our third year. They were among the first that I texted and said, you guys know how we've been praying for Ryan? <sighs> Pray for Rye. Pray for Rye. And so now, as we met in August, we were able to celebrate together and say, we prayed for Rye. And he's coming back. So I just really want to encourage you to find that Lope family group that you can connect with in that way. And if it's not a Lope family group, find, find like-minded and folks that are, are journeying with you, with your young adults. Because it's, it's big. And um, our students, they need us. They really, really do need us. So I'm just going to read this quote. I'm not going to cry. To raise a child who is comfortable enough to leave you means you've done your job. You've done your job. They are not ours to keep, but to teach how to soar on their own. Just remember that. You've done a great job. So listen up. I get to work with a group of 15 um, parents of GCU students, my parent council. And they serve alongside me for a two-year term. They meet with me monthly via Zoom and help me do all the things that I do because I'm pretty much a one-man shop. And there's no way on God's green earth I could do what I do without them. They hear my crazy ideas, they cheer me on, and they help me bring things to fruition. So, again, um, come out to the tent. A lot of them are on campus this week because they love to talk with you and share their experiences with you. And they're just beautiful, beautiful humans. And, yeah, we love them. All right. Finally, um, I'm going to end with this before I pass it on. But homecoming, family weekend, you guys, March 4, 5, 6. Yes, I see some cameras out. Take a picture of that. So it's the last home game of our men's basketball team. So homecoming usually is a football event. I don't know if you've heard. We don't have football here. Sorry. And I usually don't use words always or never, but I don't think, I don't think we're ever going to have football here. So basketball is our thing. I don't know if you heard, but we kind of made it to the big dance. You know, we kind of, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. So come back. Come back before March, honestly. Come back before then. Um, and then I just want you to know, really, honestly, what I'm doing is I'm inviting you to my 50th birthday because it's March 6th. So it's really just a ruse. We're going we're gonna to celebrate. And then finally, if you are in town, especially for my about six Arizona families <laughs> that are here, uh, next Friday night we have a really great opportunity to be on campus and celebrate and cheer on our men's soccer. Um, we have do, – what? Do, oh, no one's here. Never mind. But we – we just have a great soccer team and a brand new coach. So come out for that. And then finally, cameras again, take a picture of this screen. Cheryl Ann and I are your go-to. We're partnering with you. So if there's something going on on campus and you're like, Robin, I don't understand why this, how can my student do this? Please, please call me and let's talk that through and, and let's walk through that and figure out how we can best serve your student to do whatever they need to do to communicate with ever they, who they need to communicate with. A lot of times it's great. Um, I'll coach you up on that, and then you can call and role play with your student so that then, then they can make those phone calls. 
right, and feel that confidence that they're handling their stuff themselves. And then the Facebook page, if you're not already, make sure you like and follow the Lope Family Facebook page. Lots of great information. I always am going live and posting different things and inviting really important campus partners for you to know about and meet and be aware of. All right, you guys, thank you so much. I'm going to pass it along to Mike Caputo, who is in charge of public safety. Hi, buddy. Okay, you like that 15-year uh, younger picture of me? I had to pull out a good one for you. So, hey, welcome to GCU. My name is Mike Caputo. I'm actually the new public safety director. I got here about five months ago. And the gentleman uh, next to me there, James Jackson, he's uh, our new assistant chief, assistant public safety director. So James and I have a little bit of history. I'm gonna go through that real fast. James just came to us after a 28 year law enforcement career where he most recently was a commander over one of our large suburb uh, police departments. So we're very fortunate to have him. Um, James and I started our career 28 years ago together. We were both young street cops uh, working the rough streets of Flagstaff, Arizona. So any of you know that? So, I did about six years up there and then I kind of got an itch and I uh, went into the federal government. So I spent the last 22 years of my career uh, with the FBI. I was fortunate to uh, go all over the country. I know we had some people from Oregon. I did a tour in Oregon, Northern California, Virginia, Washington, DC. So I was fortunate to finish my last 10 years here in Arizona. Uh, just retired as the number two in charge of the FBI for the state of Arizona. So quite literally, Thank you, thank you. The reason I tell you that is quite literally I was in charge of protecting this state and ultimately when I was in Washington DC, the nation, from terrorist attacks and literally my job now is to focus on just per, um, uh, protecting your kids within the borders of this uh, university. So, I feel very fortunate to be here. Uh, there's only very few jobs that I would ever consider leaving. What I look at is probably the best job in the world, which was the FBI, and that's to come here to GCU. And there's a reason why. 2015, I was sitting in your same seats uh, with my daughter, who was coming in as an incoming freshman. She actually was one of the very first, she, she did. She uh, got a brand spanking new room in Willow Hall. So right when that dorm was completed, so any of you that are in Willow, um, she graduated out of here. She's gone on to a very successful career. She's actually in ministry. Uh, my son, I was here again in 2018, and my son is still currently here at GCU, and he's in our cybersecurity program. So needless to say, I have skin in the game with you all. So um, I'm going to go through real quick about how we kind of run security here and some of the things we're doing to uh, obviously to ensure the safety of your kids. Some things that don't realize, obviously the eight foot fence you see around campus is a big help. Um, it allows us to control who is in and who is not on this campus. We're a private university. Because of that, only people that are supposed to be here on this campus are people that are here. And we control all the access points for that. So, it is very important. It's, it's the reason why I felt very comfortable sending my own kids here. So with that said, um, some of the things you don't see, we have very sophisticated uh, camera arrays all around campus. They all feed into a 24 seven dispatch. We actually have our own dispatch center. We don't contract that out. We don't use other neighboring departments. We have a 24 seven dispatch center that that's where all the blue phones that you see all around campus. If any of the kids have an issue or need something, they get an automatic live voice with direct connect to the next thing we'll talk about is our police officers on campus. If you didn't know, uh, GCU is the only private uh, entity in the state of Arizona that's been authorized to have a post-certified police department. So our police officers are the same police officers you see with any municipal uh, uh, city or state out here. They have the same exact powers and authorities. We actually have a staffing level of about 26 police officers when we're fully staffed. That's larger than most cities, uh, city police departments in the state of Arizona. So we take that very serious. They handle anything that comes up that's criminal related and they obviously also are our armed contingent that's on campus. And you'll see them running around here. They're in the uh, dark blue uniforms with the purple patch with a cross on the patch, which I think is very cool. So um, 
the uh, uh, Phoenix PD is still a very huge partner with, with us. Our police department's only about four years old or four years young. And so because of that, historically, Phoenix PD covered this campus. We still have a, a very um, formal relationship with Phoenix PD whereby we actually have a formal memorandum of understanding where they provide additional patrols around the perimeter of this campus. They provide extra support and staffing whenever we need it. As a matter of fact, this whole week is obviously a special event for us. You're gonna see about a dozen Phoenix police officers that are around here supporting our own campus police. So that's kind of how we operate. We uh, have a very close relationship with Phoenix and they are, they are there for us for anything we need. Um, I'll move on over a little bit to the security side. You guys have probably seen the black shirt security officers that are manning most of the booths when you come into campus. So our security contingent is about 120 security guards. On any given shift, we have 20 to 25 security guards that their entire job is manning of those booths, checking of IDs, roaming campus, responding to any issues that keep our police officers freed up. So they'll do door unlocks, they'll respond to the fire alarms and things like that. And they also are first aid trained. So they become our, uh, our first triage on any time when a you know, kid falls off their skateboard, which happens quite frequently. And, uh, and we need to bring in, obviously we'll then bring in uh, fire for uh, you know, the, the fire services here, which they have a station right next door to us and they run on here a lot for things like that. But they are first aid trained, AED trained, so they are an actual first responder type of component for us. They also deal very closely with what you're gonna hear next with our student services when it comes to any kind of welfare checks on any students and, and so forth. They run through full protocols with our student care um, um, services and, uh, and uh, you know, all in an attempt to just make sure that the, the kids are okay here on campus. So we also have a full event contingent. Many universities will actually contract that out. So when you have games, when you have major events, they'll bring in uh, event staff. We, GCU, we have our own event staff. So we have an additional oh, 40 or so full-time employees that that's all they do is deal with things like welcome week, basketball games, any other sports events, major venues, and they handle all of the uh, uh, security protocols. We have full security at all the games, metal detectors, uh, and, uh, and the, full, uh, the full package. So we have our own event staff. They wear gray shirts, so you'll see them running around as well. Uh, we also have a part-time supplement on the event side. We can actually triple the size of the event staff for any major events. We'll bring in part-time employees to come in and work uh, any events, especially like basketball games. That gets very busy. Uh, and then, of course, the part that, uh, you know, is, is the necessary evil, the proactive parking enforcement. Just tell your kids, do not park in a handicapped spot and do not park in a fire zone. Obviously, we have a little bit of grace this week in move-in, but after that, uh, it's, uh, we, we, there's reasons that we have to enforce that. But we take care of all that through public safety. So just in closing, all I wanna say is that the university takes security very important here. My staff, they have me well staffed and, uh, and well postured to, uh, to protect your kids. And that's my, uh, that's my main mission in life now and what's gonna be my next probably 10 year career. So uh, I'm very, very fortunate to uh, be here and uh, you guys made a really good choice with GCU. Thank you very much. My name is Kristen Farley, and I am one of 11 licensed therapists on campus, just here to support your students. Uh, the services are free to full-time ground students, and we have appointment availability uh, every day for first-time appointments, and certainly we can see someone right away if they're uh, in a crisis appointment, uh, but we see students for all kinds of reasons. Um, in the beginning, we'll probably see a lot of students that are struggling with the transition. Uh, we see students in the middle who are going through breakups or struggling with how to regulate their emotions or just want to talk. And we see a lot of students toward the end who are struggling to finish finals or at the end of their four years struggling to figure out what they're going to do when they graduate. And we are glad to walk them through all of those distressing events. Um, if you are not aware, we all have emotions that rise and fall every day. That's normal. So if that's happening to you and you thought you were weird, just 
you're not, that's normal. We all have emotions that rise and fall every day. Right now, we're gonna have some emotions of tears and tomorrow you're gonna be okay and then you're gonna cry again. I just dropped my daughter off as well. Also got the dreaded text last night. Robin is correct, do not send them a text saying, how was your day? How was school? How were your friends? How was volleyball practice? Because I got the text last night, mom, you're asking too many questions. So I cried myself to sleep, needless to say, but it's all going to be fine because our emotions rise and fall and then they pass. And today I've accepted my daughter is fine without me. <sighs> my daughter is fine without me. It's okay. Um, but we are here to help your students process through that. Um, one of the reasons why we have a student care campus and also just student engagement on campus is because of research Chickering did that helped us see that in these next four years, these students are going to develop strong identity. And partly how they do that is by learning to manage their emotions, learning to find their purpose, um, establishing healthy relationships, and really our office wants to provide as much psychoeducation and counseling through that process as we can to each student. Um, trust us a little bit and trust your kids a little bit. And here's some things that we can practice as parents. Again, I also am learning as I just stated. <laughs> Be patient. Um, life is difficult for them and adulting is difficult. So when they call, a great thing to say is tell me more. Say nothing. They're not, unless they ask for your opinion, you don't have to give it. You just say, tell me more. Um, and again, I'm talking to myself. I'm the first one who's like, well, have you tried this? What would you do? Da, 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 da. And I just, okay, shh, tell me more. And if they won't, don't want to say any more, would you like me to contribute something to this? Or you just want to deal with it on your own and be okay if they don't want your advice. Um, validating, I can understand why this is painful instead of, well, buck up camper. Um, that's a very invalidating statement. Uh, so <laughs> first say, I care that it's hard. I can see how it's hard. Um, and then after you've given some empathy, then you can say, go get them. And then just empowering them when they do say, what should I do? To not be so quick with the answer, but to say, what have you tried and what would you like to try next? Every time we do for someone what they should be willing and able to do for themselves, we teach them we don't think that they are able to do it. So if we want them to be strong adults, we teach them we believe you are able to do it. And maybe you take 20 steps you don't need to take to get to the same place that I could get you in 30 seconds and it is agonizing to watch and still I'm going to watch you do it and not fix it for you. Um, and then after they take 20 times longer to get there than you wanted them to, when they're done, you say, I knew you could do it because it empowers them to try again and eliminate the 20 steps to 18 down to 16. And hopefully in four years, they can do it faster, more efficiently, and just trust their own competence because that's what we really need from them. If your student does need care, um, typically where a student needs care is when they get stuck. Um, one example of how we might get stuck is if all we know to do is grin and bear it, 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 it's a long 16 weeks and by about 14 we have some meltdowns happening because maybe we're learning something as parents that that's how we deal with things too. We grin and bear it, grin and bear it, grin and bear it and it should not be surprising that after a while we might have some type of meltdown. Um, because grinning and bearing is not a healthy way, coping skill to process through things. We have to identify emotion, process through the thoughts, feelings, wants and needs that we have, and then get to a healthy choice. So that's part of the reason that you might um, suggest that your student come to student care. It's just a conversation. It's a confidential conversation. And sometimes we can just help them sort through what they're thinking and feeling and learn some coping skills that help them survive the whole semester. Um, we provide, like I said, daily appointments. We also provide weekly groups on relationships, anxiety and depression, uh, healthy resiliency through transition. So students will be able to attend a group weekly and individual counseling after the first appointment that's available daily. Those sessions are more like two to three weeks apart because there's 11 of us and there's 22,000 of them. And so we don't have availability to see students weekly. If your student does need a higher level of care and does need weekly appointments, we have a referral list through our office where they can contact a therapist in the area who could give them weekly appointments. 
And also, uh, we want you to know that if your student is under 18, so any minor, they're to receive services from us, they have to have a, a document signed. So if you anticipate that your uh, minor student, any student under 18 would like to seek counseling services throughout their this year, a signed document has to be signed by both parents in person or if it's later, it has to be uh, signed and notarized and given to us. So if you would like to take care of that today, you can stop by building 26 on the second floor where our offices are and you can sign that uh, minor document if you want. If your student is 18 or over, they have to come on their own free will. Well, your 17 year old still has to come on their own free will. It's just you have to release <laughs> permission for them to come. If they're 18 or over, they have to come on their own free will. And anything they say um, is confidential to us. So you won't, if you call and say, I would like to make my uh, child an appointment, we are going to say, you're going to have to send your child on their own free will to us. And if after we are seeing your child, you call and want to check in on that appointment, we are going to answer, we cannot confirm or deny whether we see your child, because that is the law um, in terms of their confidentiality. So your best bet if you want your child to have counseling is just encourage them to come see us. Now, if your student is in a crisis of safety, uh, meaning you are concerned for their literal safety or for a life or death matter, you can always email wellnesscheck at gcu.edu. And just like Mike was talking about, we partner with our public safety. They do a great job of taking care of things in an emergency and partnering with us to take care of your students. But what this will do is send two public safety officers to your student's room to check on their safety. So just hesitate and think through that. If you think the emergency is they didn't text me back in 10 minutes, two public safety officers at their room for that's going to maybe cause a little bit of a divide between you and them, so maybe don't do that. Um, only an emergency, but that is a 24-7 monitored line, and again, we will uh, be able to find out really quickly and s provide safety for your student and provide care. Just making sure I said everything. I did. We are really glad to be here. We are really thankful that you trust your student to come here. Just know that we are here. We love listening to them. We love spending time um, caring for their uh, needs throughout all four years here if they need us. And um, also a department that really cares for your student is Res Life, and they're up next. Well, hello. We are extremely excited to finally be together. Um, this is Holly Neely. I'm Chris Hayes. We are from Residence Life. We are two of six Res Life managers. Um, and man, it is so exciting to have our students back on campus. Just to see everybody, all the golf carts and longboards and everybody else walking around has been absolutely incredible. So we're really excited to have you guys here and be able to talk in person. Uh, we have a couple things we want to go over really quick just um, that really affect residence life and what we do. Um, first thing is the W of the first year. We know that your students are going to be moving here to campus, some of them living out of home for the first time ever, and they're going to have a lot of highs and a lot of lows. And that's what their first year is going to look like, a W. And so when your student is calling you, they're going to be calling you, telling you about, man, this was the greatest day ever. I passed my first test. My friends went out. We ate at Chick-fil-A. We have two on campus. The full menu now, it's not the abbreviate. This, like, this is the best day ever, right? Then they're going to call you a couple weeks later, and they're going to be like, man, today was a rough day. I, you know, my friends, we tried to get together. It's Sunday. We went to Chick-fil-A. Still closed. Like even at GCU, you know, so, you know, maybe they're struggling in a class, you know, maybe their roommate and them had, a, had an argument and they're not seeing eye to eye on something. And so they're going to call you at those low moments too. And we want you to know that we are here. We love what we do because we get to interact with students in those moments as well. Um, we have uh, 60 professional staff that work in residence life that live all over campus and the buildings, and they oversee our team of 413 RAs. 
Um, and those RAs are trained also with all the processes and all the things that we do um, on campus, and they're there to walk alongside of your students as well. Um, and so in those moments when they're, you know, freaking out, like, this is the best day ever, I just need someone to dance with, they're going to find someone to dance with them, trust me. And then those days that they just are like, man, I just need to vent to someone. I, like, I don't know what to do. Like, is there any resources for me? What, you know, how do I have this conversation with my roommate? Like, do we start a petition for Chick-fil-A to be open on Sunday? Like, we're there to walk alongside of them as well. And so um, we really want uh, to partner with you in those moments and know that you can always defer your students to say, hey, have you reached out to your RA or gone down to the lobby and talked to your RD during the day? Um, we have tons of resources and things on campus available for students and we're always willing to walk alongside them in those. Um, something else we wanted to share with you is kind of our approach in the living area. Um, a lot of times people don't really even know um, that intentionality goes on in the living area. So besides putting a roof over your student's head, um, we have trained our student leaders that Chris just talked about to execute something we call the community learning plan. Um, Chris and I have been in this role for nine and ten years, which is a, a really long time. And I will tell you, probably nine years ago, we would have said that we're kind of winging it. At this point in the game, we have been doing this for such a long time. Um, GCU actually has the most residential students, probably more than any other school in the nation. We've bypassed um, the amount of students living on campus that even ASU has. And so we have done a really um, intentional way of developing something that's meaningful and impactful um, and we've assessed it and it's working and so we think it's really important for students to learn life skills outside of classroom academics and so our student leaders are doing events on their floor that are fun and engaging but students walk away um, becoming more self-aware becoming um, more aware of their emotions, more emotionally intel intelligent. Um, we have a lot of goals established that again, the RAs are going through um, things with like conflict management, how to do your laundry, some very practical skills. Um, and we're really proud of our program and we're really excited for the experience your students are gonna have this year um, with our community learning plan. Another thing we get a lot of questions about is roommate conflict and roommate expectations. Um, and so one of the big resources that we have um, if your student's living on campus is to please encourage them to talk to their roommates and fill out their roommate agreement. Um, that's something that RAs will be talking to all their residents about as well. And it basically is a very comprehensive document um, that they're gonna walk through and it just, Ask them to talk about tons of different things. Everything from when do you like to go to bed, when do you like to wake up, what kind of, you know, how loud of music do you like to play, you know, do you like inviting people over, do you not like inviting people over, like all of the, you know, who likes doing dishes, who's taking out the trash, all that kind of stuff. Um, because that is really what sets them up well for having a healthy relationship all year, setting those expectations really up front. Now, we know even having those conversations up front, things change throughout the year. And there's going to be times that, man, I'm just really frustrated with how my roommate's doing this or they're not doing this or my roommate's mad at me and trying to talk to me but is yelling at me. You know, all these kind of things come up throughout the year. Um, and we, are, we have a process to walk through, them, uh, through with them in those moments too um, where we encourage them to talk to their roommate about it. Their RA will sit down and mediate a conversation if they need to. Um, and RD will step in and, and help mediate as well. Um, and so we really want to encourage uh, our students, our residents to really build up those skills to be able to confront someone else in a healthy way um, to share their perspective to know that hey like this is not going well for me what can we do to make this go well for both of us and to have that perspective not just to be selfish about everything but to hear someone else's perspective too and we really feel like our process does that well and so um, we have that all laid out there's a bunch of resources inside the living areas that talk about that process um, and we uh, encourage students to go through that at any point um, that they feel like there's any tension or anything going on. We never want things to just fester inside of us and get to a point where it's like, now I just, I can't even talk to anyone about it because I'm so mad. Um, and when those moments happen, we kind of have to have a reality check of, okay, let's talk about, have you talked to your roommate? Like, did you, did they know that you're upset that you're, they're not doing the dishes as frequently as you thought they were? And they think everything's great and you're over here really mad for the last two months. So um, we really want to encourage that communication between them. 
When it comes to roommate conflict, you most likely will be the first person your student calls. Um, and when they talk to you about this, they're going to be very extreme in the way that they're explaining it. And in some cases, very rarely, it might be a case of safety. And just like Kristen said, and just like um, Mike said from public safety, if it's a safety issue, you can email in or you can call the public safety line and report something. If they're getting a threat or something like that. Most of the things we deal with is your student isn't unsafe, they're uncomfortable. And if you can reflect back on your experience, maybe you went to college, maybe you didn't, maybe it was in your first job, but it's in discomfort is where we're challenged to grow. And so when I called my mom 20 years ago when I was in college, I probably was saying the same thing your student's probably gonna tell, tell you. Um, but most likely, the situation is about a disagreement in the room over toilet paper, but my day has just been crazy. I got a bad grade on my first exam, I'm not getting along with some of the people that I got along with a few weeks ago, and I'm just kind of at my end. And so then I'm going to call you, or your child's going to call you, and just kind of explain how bad the day is. And your first thought is, I'm going to call the university right now and figure this out for my student. Um, we really don't feel like that's our most successful student story when it comes to conflict resolution. Your student knows they can walk down to the RA's room and ask for advice. They can walk down to the RD's office, who again are professional staff. Most of them have their masters, they're trained in this type of thing, um, and get the help they need. If you do email the resident director or call the resident director, the first thing we're gonna do is say, we're gonna you know, welcome your student into this conversation. And we are willing to do that, but your student's gonna be present for that so we can really work with them on those skills. Um, we see a lot of success in the program. Again, it's not like we've been doing this for a little while. We've been doing this for years um, and the, the things that we have in place are really gonna work. And so even though I just met you five minutes ago, we're just gonna ask you to trust us, which I think a lot of people have been asking you to do this day or today. And I think it's a hard season in life to trust people um, and let go, but we're just gonna ask you to do that. It is our primary responsibility to keep your student first. We are student-centric. We care a ton about them. And in a meeting with a student about conflict in their room, they're my number one priority. I'm advocating. I'm not you, but I have children, and I think about, if this is my child, how am I going to make my next move with them? And so please let me do that for you. I'd love to do that for you. It's been successful. It's fun. Five years ago, I opened the Grove. I had over 3,200 students living in freshman buildings, and I met with a ton of parents that year and learned a lot of things that have dictated the decisions and the execution we're doing now. And so again, we love you so much. You've developed your students well. Let them um, kind of fly in this area and we'll take it over from there. And the last thing I was told I was legally obligated to mention is student conduct. But you guys aren't gonna really have to worry about that because student conduct is when your parent when your students do something wrong and you know that's not gonna happen, right? Yeah, okay. So um, student conduct, just to give you a brief overview, is uh, we have a, a very restorative process when it comes to student conduct. Um, so there is a difference between our student conduct, which is what we have for um, violations inside the living areas um, and minor things that happen on campus. Um, and then there's the university code of conduct. And the code of conduct is for major violations or academic like plagiarism, if somebody's cheating, things like that. That goes, that's separate from student conduct. Um, student conduct uh, sees students for things on campus when um, they're not following rules inside the living areas. If someone brings alcohol because we're a dry campus into their room um, and they get caught with that, they're going to come to student conduct. And so that process in the past, um, years and years and years ago, was just very punitive. What you would think about from student conduct, like, hey, you brought alcohol on campus, you're not supposed to have that, slap you on the wrist, give you a $50 fine and tell you to go on your way. And that's not what our process is at all. Um, we have a, an entire department of people that meet with students students that go through that process, talk to them about the choices they've made. Um, how did you end up, like, why did you make this choice? Who are you hanging out with? Um, what has led you to, to this decision in this place that you would make a decision to do something that is obviously against the, the rules on campus um, and really try to dig deeper than just uh, you made a wrong choice, now move on. 
Um, and so they're very restorative. Some of the processes will even involve you as parents, depending on the age of your student and what um, has been going on. So um, if you have any questions about that, you can look it up. A lot of information on student conduct on our website. But again, I know none of you are going to have to worry about that, so we'll cut it off there. So thank you guys. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Hi. My name is Katherine Magnuson, and I am a university admissions counselor here at GCU. Good morning. My name is Brittany Lout. I am a student services counselor, otherwise known as an SSC. Okay, Brittany, before we start, I was looking around this room and something hit me. You know when two people get married, stand at the altar, there's two families, one on this side and one on this side, and these two families, whether they like it or not, have to become one family. You know how that goes? You know, you know what I'm talking about? So Brittany, what do you think the percentage chance is that two families in this room right now that are perfect strangers are going to become one family someday? It's pretty likely. I'm going to go with like 110%. 110%, guys. Okay, I want everyone to look around. Look around. Everyone. Come on. I need some movement. Look around. You might be looking at your new family. You just don't know it yet. So we're at 110%. We think that there's two people in this room represented that will end up together. So that's what we think. Yeah, lots of memories are going to be made here. This arena, you're sitting here, and four years from now, you're going to be sitting here again watching them walk across the stage. And in between those two events, memories are going to be made here for your student and for you too. So our job today, Brittany and I, is to explain to you our roles because they're very different, but they're very important for you to understand. Up until now, you have mostly dealt with a university admissions counselor like myself. Do I have anyone that has had KMAG in this room? Raise your hand. Okay, a few. So I actually go by K Mag. I kind of dropped the rest of Catherine. I just kept the K and then I dropped the rest of Magnuson and took the Mag. So I go by K Mag. I have been in your students' high schools. I have been nurturing them. I have been helping them through the process from the very first meeting all the way till today. Okay, so my job is admissions to admit. And in that process, I've loved meeting all of my students. But then GCU wants you to, wants me to go back and find some more awesome students. And we take that baton and we pass it. Pretend like I've got a baton and I'm running it to Brittany. And Brittany is a student services counselor and I'm going to let her tell you what she does. But the beauty, guys, is that there's only two. There's me and there's her. There's a role of university admissions counselor and there's a role of student services counselor. So you're being served very well here at GCU with relationships. And that's really important to us. So, Brittany, tell us what you do. All right. So, um, as she said, we're going to take things over. We will become your student's main point of contact. The same way that she was kind of a one-stop shop for you, um, I will become that one-stop shop for you. Um, if we don't know something, we definitely know how to find the resource to give to your student or we have somewhere else that we can pass them. But our main goal is to make sure that they are on the right track. Um, for graduation and that their bill is getting paid in the meantime. Um, your student, if they don't already know who their SSC is, in the um, student portal homepage, our name is going to be listed right there with um, phone number and email for contacting us. They're also going to get an email in a couple of weeks that tells them it's time to meet with your SSC. They're going to get that email every semester. It gives them a link to our calendar that they need to go plug themselves into. And during that meeting, they're going to come meet with us. We're going to go over their degree plan. We're going to go over some future schedules. We're going to go over finances. Um, some students, um, they really only need to meet with us maybe once a year. Other students in different majors may need to meet with us um, both semesters. It just depends. Um, but we'll gauge that with the student and let them know what the expectation is. Um, we are available between those appointments, though. If they need anything, they can call email will definitely be available and we are um, on campus too for them to come see us. Um, if a student is not doing well in a class, um, Sally Lope is not showing up, Sally Lope is, is not doing well on, on quizzes, we're going to get a contact from the instructor that says, hey, I'm a little concerned. So we're going to reach out to your student and say, hey, like, are you okay? What's going on? Um, do we need to do some ACE tutoring? Things like that. So we're also going to be contacting them for various things so that way they know that we're there for their help. 
Um, and so there's different ways that we'll be in contact with them. We super, super enjoy working with them over um, the course of their, their degree program. Um, sometimes they're going to change their major 50 times. It happens, but we will be there to walk them through whatever those difficult decisions might be. Um, one of the big differences, though, between my role and KMAG is something called FERPA. And it's kind of been a common theme that you've been hearing up here with some other speakers um, regarding parents. We love our parents. Thank you for giving us your kids. But it's not that the communication is going to stop, but it will significantly slow down. Similar to when you go into a doctor's office and they talk to you about HIPAA. In education, we have FERPA. It's the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. So once your student starts classes next Tuesday, our communication is going to go just to your student. This um, KMAG might have been reaching out to you directly. We're not going to do that. We're going to contact your student. So if there's a bill due, if there's anything going on, it's going straight to your student, and we expect the student to pass it along to you. Um, the student can fill out a release form to allow us to speak with you. You have to have a password in order to speak with us and things like that. But FERPA does stop us from having some of those conversations. We know you pay the bill. We know you just want to know what the balance is. We know you want to know how their grades are doing. But some of that stuff we just can't say. Um, so we're not being mean, I promise. We're just keeping in line with the laws that are out there that we have to follow. Um, SSCs do not have cell phones, so we don't have the ability to text your student kind of like the UAC could, um, so they just need to stick to the, the communication um, options that are given by phone and email that are shown in their portal. Um, but otherwise, we are available to them. We love, love, love working with them. I tell people, I come to graduations four years from now and you're sitting there crying. I'm somewhere in here crying because I'm so excited to see your student graduate and I'm so honored I was able to help them get there. Okay, so we're gonna do one last thing and it's called story time. So every group, family group in here represents an individual, a very special, very unique, and very important person. And we take that very seriously here at GCU. And I wanna tell you a story that would hopefully be something you can take in your mind's eye back home with you to kind of remember um, this day. So when I was growing up, I grew up just down the street from here, I had a dad that would um, wake me up every morning. That was his job, was to wake up the, th the three of us every morning. And he'd put a poster, he put a poster at the top of each of our beds. So I want you to paint a picture in your mind. I want you to think of the view of the ocean from the view of the harbor. And I want you to think of the harbor as kind of that safe place. There's a wall that breaks the waves. There's, um, a, there's tucked tucked sails on sailboats and there's slips with ships that are restocking, they're refueling, and they're getting ready for their next journey. It's the harbor. It's a safe place. There's no waves in the harbor. So my dad would come every morning and he'd put his hand on my back, my, his strong dad hand. You guys, dads have, dads have strong, firm hands. And he'd put his hand on my back and he'd kind of rub my back. And he'd say, good morning, Catherine. It's time to sail. It's a new day. Come and eat breakfast and let's get you to school. And then he would read the words on the poster. Can you guys picture the poster in your minds? So you're seeing a ship out sailing out into the sea in this poster. And then he would say the words to the poster, which were, a ship in a harbor is safe but that's not what ships were built for. And he would just say, it's time to sail. And for some reason, as a child, it gave me confidence. I don't know why. I think it's because I knew there was a place to be, come back and be safe and to be re refueled and restocked. So I wanna give you that vision of that poster and of that scene because your students are doing that they're taking a longer journey this time than just a daily journey. But the thing I want you to remember is they need to grab the steering wheel of the ship because they're gonna direct where the ship goes. It isn't gonna be you anymore. It's gonna be them. It's gonna be your unique child that's gonna steer that ship. And so I wanna kinda give that to you as an encouragement to tell them, hey, where are you steering today? If they call you, just say, well, well, tell me more about that. Where are you, go where, where are you going with this? And, and, and what choices are you making that are directing your life? Just like a ship would. So that's my story for you. 
Um, we are going to um, continue and, and we're ready to continue. I did want to say, Robin, one more thing. I'm a little sad because you're talking a lot about the Seahawks and um, I do like the Seahawks and I do really like Washington, but what about, do we have any Minnesota people in here? Okay. Okay, what about the Vikings? Can we hear it for the Vikings? Because I have a Vikings credit card. That, that's what's on my credit card, Robin. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Minnesota girl at heart, even though I was raised in Arizona. So go Vikings. I love Vikings and the Twins. Listen, I just love football, okay? But college football is really where it's at. Um, so you guys, it is 1128. We're running a tiny bit behind. I'm very much a honorer of time. So here's what we're going to do. Like in football, two minute warning. Okay. So, so I want you all to stand up, just kind of shake it out a little bit, maybe turn around, meet those people that are going to be at your Thanksgiving table. Um, yeah. Say hello, introduce yourself. If you need to empty your bladder, that second or third cup of coffee, cause you had a 6 AM move in time has hit. Please go and take care of that. And we're going to start our final segment of parent and family orientation with a panel. Um, a lot of familiar faces are going to be up here, a couple of new faces. So let's just say, I did say two minutes, but let's say 30, 33. 33 will be our start time. All right? So do what you need to do. Come on back. We'll be set up and ready to go. Thanks, you guys. Didn't even want to go out, why'd you call me? I've had a long day and still got laundry. Two, three, four, make me drink more. Then you walk through the door. All my friends are buying blow in the back room. There's people climbing up the walk cause it's a packed house. Who are you? What's your name? I ask. Surprise, she answer fast. I think there's too many random bodies dancing near us. If he's a crowd, what would you call this?
All right, everybody, come on back, find your seat. One last stretch, one last introduction. I met some phenomenal humans from George Fox area and California. No, I don't need it. We're not clicking. Todd, come sit by me. Yeah, look at it. Look what I, no, you can't, you can't mix it up. I can't mix it up. I wanted to mix it. All right, all right, all right. Guys, I, the girls and the boys, we cannot infiltrate each other. It's like, it's like the old roller rink snow, what they call that? It's time for snowball. Boy, no, anybody? Just me? All right. Um, all right. We, this is the winning team with me. Welcome to the good right. side. That's right, as Brittany <laughs> says. <laughs> you scoot it over. I want to be so close. <laughs> All right. Um, this is our last and final. Oh, my gosh, I'm so sure. I have to climb up here. I need, like, a climbing rope. Um, we are going to share just some tidbits. We're all taking off our professional hats and putting on our mom and dad hats. Some of us are not moms or dads. Yeah. But have moms and dads. Moms on the side. Yeah. Yeah, moms with the dad on the side. Um, so we're just going to look back. Hindsight, it's always 2020, and so we have some to share with you today. So without further ado, we're just going to get going, and you know what to do. Introduce yourself first. I'm Todd Forrest. I have taught here at GCU in the College of Theology for almost 11 years, and it's been a wonderful experience. I've had three of my uh, three, all three of my students, or they were actually children and students, I uh, graduated from here, and so it's been, it's been a wonderful over a decade of having GCU in our lives, and we just love this place, and we're so glad that you're here today. Are we just introducing, or am I still talking? Okay. You didn't even ask a question. Okay. You know, okay, yeah. You know what, being a parent here has, has been a great a great journey, and I, one thing I wanted to just remind you to do is to develop the skill of navigating new relationships. You're going to change in your relationship with your student. That is healthy to have a transition and a change. It's going to be a, a whole new type of relationship that you're going to have with you and your spouse. That you're going to have one less person in the house. You know, if you have a teenage boy that you have sent to GCU, in some respects it's a pay raise because, and there'll actually be food in the refrigerator. Um, and you have to pay it in tuition on the back end, but there's going to be food there when you're hungry. It's a good thing. Um, but th those are new relationships that, that you have. Um, your student is going to be making new relationships. One of the blessings that we have had in our lives is that uh, two of my, my kids found uh, spouses at GCU. And I have a wonderful son-in-law and a wonderful daughter-in-law. Two of my students have uh, found careers through internships that GCU provides. And they are still working a couple years later in those career paths. And they have been very good to them. Those are all new relationships that we just help to navigate with, uh, with our students at those times. If you're a single parent... I encourage you to embrace the new relationships needed. Um, Robin's support groups uh, and share lens of support groups of being together and their prayer groups. I encourage you to get engaged and to do those things because they will be very meaningful with you in these times where it might be an element of loneliness in this new semester for you. Um, something that I learned while putting my daughter through GCU was um, teaching her to have healthy communication. Uh, I think that it's, you know, some things happen and whether it be she was in a classroom and, and she was a commuter. So by the time she sat down in a classroom, people had made friends and she really didn't know people. And um, so she's like, mom, like, you know, I really don't know anybody and people aren't talking to me. Um, you know, and so of course me being right here on campus, I'm like, okay, what classroom, what building, what time, and I'll come there and I'll let them know you're awesome and everyone should be your friend. Not practical, but, um, so I had to teach her how to basically say that. Um, so just making sure that they know how to have those healthy conversations. Sometimes the conversations are hard. Um, she had a group project and there's always that one person in the group project that, you know, you know, 
Um, and so she didn't really like this person very much. She wasn't the person, um, but she didn't like that person. And you know, just teaching her to how, how to have those conversations with that individual, um, as much as that mama bear and papa bear in us just wants to handle everything for them, we can't. Um, it's kind of like the, the residence life was talking about roommate stuff. The same thing's gonna happen in classrooms, um, on Lopes Way, whatever the case is, you just wanna make sure that your kids know how to have healthy conversations. You don't always have to butt in as much as you want to, um, but allowing them to have those conversations and learn those healthy communication skills because they're definitely gonna take them with them um, when they go into their professional fields and even beyond GCU. So healthy communication, cannot stress it enough um, that they know how to do that. Good morning, my name's Kelly McGuire and I'm starting my sixth year teaching here. I'm an English professor. Um, currently, I have a daughter who is a commuter, so she is going to be starting her junior year. And the story that I wanna share with you is something where just recently, I just about blew it as a parent. I wanna do, you know, I wanna try to teach my kid how to be independent. And incidentally, this happened yesterday after I left the parent panel. So I get home and my commuter kid is at my house doing our laundry because you know, laundry costs money in an apartment and it's free at my house. So we sit down, we're talking about, you know, school starts next week, you're going full time, you chose to work full time. And then she kind of drops a few bombs on me. And of course, I immediately want to become the annoying, belittling, and controlling parent. And I had to, in that moment, be reminded of all the things that I had just heard yesterday, sitting in the audience with all of you and listening to the parent panel. I think I may have saved it, but I'm just saying that sometimes it's really, really hard to help our kids to become independent. I had to remind myself that I grow the most in adversity and even though the decision that I think my kid is gonna make is gonna be really painful for her, and then painful for me and my husband, I'm going to have to let her walk through that so that she can grow and become independent. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I am obviously not a parent. Um, my name is Ben Claypool. I'm the student body vice president um, this year. Um, and I'm here to kind of give a little bit of a student perspective on I guess how to be a parent. I have, I can, I'm not in your guys' shoes. I don't know how it is, you know, doing that. Um, but my, the thing my parents have done a great job at, I think, is being available but not annoying. Um, my parents live um, in North Carolina, so they live on the other side of the country, um, and I'm sure they would want to be calling me every five minutes if they could, making sure I'm good, you know, doing all of that stuff. But what they did great is they kind of let me you know, have my life here at GCU. They, uh, I, I obviously got involved in things like that and I started to get busy and those type of things and my parents didn't call that often. I would call them when I had time and we kind of formed that relationship where they were available but they weren't calling me every five minutes or every day or anything like that. And it really gave me time to like kind of work on my independence, work on being myself, f finding myself here at GCU which, which was a really, really great thing for me, in my opinion, you know? Um, so, yeah, that's what I'd say. Well, I've already introduced myself. I do have a son who's a third-year student here. His name's Broder, and um, people wonder what, what his name means, and I said, well, it's the Swedish word for brother, and I call him bro, and then everyone thinks I'm a hippie mom, like, ooh, come on, bro, let's go. You're such a cool mom. If you call your kid bro, I'm like, no, that's his name. So, that's my son, and um, I think what, he's my fourth, so I have three older that have already graduated from college and they're, they're doing their lives. I think I learned the biggest lesson of what not to do with my oldest. Uh, he went to a school about five hours of uh, a drive from where we lived. And I just thought it would be really cool to just stop in on him. Like, let's surprise him. Okay, that is not a good idea. I think what we need to think about is the, <laughs> the love and the feelings that a mother has for a son, a parents have for children, is uniquely different from the way they love you. Yes, they do love you. In fact, they love you a lot. That They've learned love from you. They've learned to love from your modeling. But it, I think God ordained it to be different. And I think we learn that when, your kids will learn it when they have a baby, okay? So it, it's a cycle of life. So 
let's just picture I stop in and I do this weekend. I get there Friday night and I'm like, we're here, we're surprised. And they're really all they want from you is they want a really nice dinner out at a very expensive restaurant and a trip to Target. And then they want you to leave. Like quickly, they want you out because they have plans, right? So we don't want to interrupt their plans. We want them to have their life, okay? In, in return, let them see you have your life. Let them see you doing some new stuff. Let them see that you don't answer the phone every second they call. You know, let them see that you're moving into a new phase of your life as well. Now fast forward to you sitting in that Minnesota whatever you have in Minnesota, like, do you have a three season porch? Hard to say, because there's only two seasons, right? I don't know. You're sitting in Minnesota and you're just doing your normal day and all of a sudden, your child from GCU just surprises you. Okay, your whole life just got really good. You are so excited, you drop everything. The whole weekend plans go on the wayside. You're taking pictures, you're posting them on Facebook. My kid visited me, like it's a surprise. And they, you, you feel differently about them surprising you than they will feel about you surprising them. So pray they surprise you and don't ever surprise them. That is my advice. Good advice, I would say. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Noah. I am not a parent, but I hope to be one one day. So um, I'm our director of alumni relations here at the university, which means I get to interact with all of our alums. We've got about 220,000 of them around the country, and they're amazing people uh, because they come from an amazing student body, and I believe that that amazing student body is, is a byproduct of the amazing parents that we have here today uh, and that we have had here on campus for welcome weeks in, in, in the past. So I want to just start by saying thank you um, and congratulations on, on making such a, an incredible step in, in the world of parenthood, something uh, that I really appreciated my parents did for me when I was a student and I think it echoes what a lot of people have said here today is um, their availability uh, to coach me towards a solution and not just provide one. Uh, in college, you learn uh, a lot of new things in the world, like how cars work and laundry. And uh, I remember, you know, crazy moments where you call your parents and say, what does 2% mean on milk? Or how... <laughs> how, how long can I go past an expiration date? It's like, not that long. Um, so, so... I, 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 and those are simple problems, but there obviously are more challenging ones that come along the way. And I think that my parents' um, ability to con have a conversation with me that led me towards a solution rather than just providing one really boosted my confidence. Um, in this next stage of young adulthood, I, I feel like I can tackle some of the challenges that are coming my way. And I'm very grateful because I think that feeling comes from uh, the way that my parents coached me up in college and, and were accessible and available, but not insertive and aggressive like we've said before today. So that's something that I think I would encourage everybody here to do, and it made a really big impact on my life. All right, so um, I just realized something uh, after hearing everybody. Am I the only parent that my daughter didn't find a husband here at GCU? I'm, <laughs> uh, yeah, so okay. Mine is still looking. I just, so. yeah, I kept hearing about all these relationships, so. So anyway, she's 25 and, and, you know, very successful if anybody has a son. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just met somebody that works with her, so please don't, don't snitch me off. But um, Oh, she'll be mortified. So, hey, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to just throw out maybe a little more of a tip. Um, you guys know, uh, obviously, my background and where I come from things. Obviously, I look at things a little differently. But uh, one of the things, I'm going to go off script again and switch it up a little bit, but um, keeping with this whole theme of trying to, you know, be in their lives but yet not being over the top, one thing that worked was kind of a game changer for us, and those of you that have found it, uh, I applaud you because it's a negotiation I think you have to have with your kids, but this whole uh, business now with technology and with uh, location services on the phones. So it's, it's huge, and I'll tell you why, and the kids will be reluctant. They won't want to do it. They don't want parents to know what they're doing. But I think once you get them past the fact that, hey, I've got way too many things going on in my life to be stalking you on what you're doing during the day, but to have something that I have in my hand to where when I want to know what you're doing, where you're at, are you okay, 
and I don't have to actually reach out and text you and bother you or if there's something going on. That's just a huge sense of relief for a parent. And if there's any way you can do it, the way I did it is I said, even my, my 24-year-old daughter, I told her, I'll still pay for your phone as long as you keep that location services on. We use Life360, it's free. Uh, there's Apple iPhone, but uh, it's really good and a quick story that's, that's kind of humorous. Um, so this goes back to my days when I, I was with the FBI and my wife calls me frantically and she says, uh, uh, Mike, somebody just called me and said that they kidnapped our daughter and they want $10,000 and they know her name and they know, uh, and they said they took her over the border and the whole thing. And I said, I s stop, honey, did you tell them our daughter's name or did they tell you our daughter's name? And she thought about that for a second. And I said, and she also said, well, I tried to call her and she didn't answer. And I said, well, she never answers. So that's, that's, that's typical. So the long of the short is, um, it's a well-known scam. My wife wouldn't have known it, but uh, people will call, they'll put a sobbing person on the phone and your immediate thing, you're gonna say the first person that comes to your mind. So of course she said my daughter's name. And then they had the name, they had everything they needed. They prey on her fears. Uh, we have your daughter, we need $10,000, you need to wire it here. So once we backed her off the ledge a little bit and I said, did you check her phone? She says, no, she forgot about it. She checks her phone and she's at church, she's at work, but she's not answering. I said, well, call her coworker. And in one minute, we were able to get hold of her coworker. She said, yeah, she's in here teaching a class, she's just fine. So I use that as an example of these location services, how they can turn a big issue into a non-issue. And that could work with you just having that, um, you know, just that, that sense of knowing where your kids are. Um, I, I think it was a game changer for us. Do not use it to look where they're at and then question them about where they were at, please. They, they will turn that thing off in a, in a second. This is for you and your consumption only and you leave it at that. And uh, it's gonna give you a lot of, uh, uh, I, I think that's gonna help out a lot with just your knowing where they're at and at their safe during the day. Listen, so we know today that we have a huge gamut pendulum swing of emotions, right? Res Live talked about the W for your students. We've also got the W for ourselves as parents. So I'll just give you an example from what I've heard from you all this week. Um, I met a dad uh, from Texas and, you know, he was, he was kind of teary, you know, the, the cell phone, that's, that's kind of teary, the pinning. He's like, yeah, I, I, had, I had a tear, but when I get home, I'm going to um, renovate my, my daughter's room into an Airbnb to help pay for this tuition. <laughs> Right? And then I met a mom from Spokane, Washington, and um, dropping off their daughter. And I said, well, so what, what are you going to do next week? Because this was their third and final. So I was like, okay, what's on your schedule? Let's make sure you've got something to do to distract you. And she looked at me right in the eye. And she's like, I'm going to cry. Okay. All right. We're going to schedule that out. Excellent. You know. So I say that because we, we get it and we understand it. And so we're going to go one more time down the line and just really coach you up, cheer you on. And Mike, I don't know if you want to start with it with a yeah. tip. Um, and we'll just work this way and uh, go from there. So we want to coach you up on your way out. So I'll give you another uh, tip kind of along the theme of, um, of uh, you know, trying to let them get out and spread their wings. So I kind of struggled with this question. And so what I did, uh, of course, I actually called my daughter and I asked her, hey, what what did uh, uh, your mom and I do good? And what is something that maybe I can give as a tip to other parents? And uh, she actually said, well, it's something you probably didn't even realize, Dad, but we had initially, so I had a little bit of a unique, this goes for the Pacific time zone people, I guess, anybody that's within a two hour drive. Um, it's really easy for your kids to come home on the weekends. And so we had her living on campus, but yet, you know, we just lived up in the North Valley up here. So she would start coming home on the weekends initially her freshman year, and then that turned into coming home on Fridays and not going back till Mondays. And you start doing the math, three out of seven days and you're paying for a dorm. Yeah, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. But I also didn't want to be the parent to say you weren't welcome at home. Of course, we love to see you. So one of the things she actually reminded me of is I urged her to, um, you know, while she was on campus, uh, to get a campus job and for her to get one, because they got great campus jobs for the kids, 20 hours a week, and it keeps them on campus. All of a sudden, that uh, 
uh, made it to where Fridays weren't as free anymore, Mondays weren't as free. We started seeing her less on the weekend. She started getting more engaged because she had a whole new social circle through work as well. And my daughter was very much an introvert. And once she started getting engaged in that by her second half of her freshman semester when she picked up that job, I really think that was kind of a life changer for her. And she got fully engaged into the campus life. But it goes with the whole safe harbor. Of course, coming home is really safe and you can get your laundry done and all that. I get it. But you really need to kind of, without being the parent that tells them, hey, get back to school, um, you need to kind of push them that direction. And that was, a, that was an easy way for us to do that. So, Awesome. Um, my point in, of encouragement for parents, I think, would, would be to, to take some confidence in the reality that GCU loves your kids, um, really, really loves your kids. That's not just an orientation talking point. That's not just something that, we're, you know, we're, we're told to say. I, I think it's put in practice on a regular basis from the top to bottom, President Mueller to everybody that is on uh, staff and, and faculty here. They uh, care significantly about about your child and the experience that they have. I think all of us are deeply committed to helping people find purpose, um, but not our own, the students that, 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 that we get to serve. And so um, what that looks like practically, I think, is being um, welcoming to, to all components of our, our um, Lope family, which is alumni and students and staff and faculty and parents. And so you guys play an incredible role in our campus culture and the things that we're doing, um, the way that you are encouraging and supporting your students throughout the duration of their experience here has major impacts on, on this community uh, and, on, and on the lives of the people that are a part of it. So um, the job might look a little bit different. The role might look a little bit different. Um, I, I, parenting isn't, isn't done yet. I think it just changes a little bit, and that's a lot of what we've talked about here today. So that would be my encouragement to you all. Um, I hope this week you're able to see some practical examples of the way that GCU is, is hoping to prioritize um, pursuing and loving on your kids. And so um, that would be my my encouragement. Great. I also asked my students that have graduated, what did I do right? And the one thing that they came up with seems a little bit um, minor, but I don't think it was minor. They, two of my students went to a school in Jackson, Tennessee. So I used to take $20 bills and I used to fold them up so that all you could see was Jackson's face. If you didn't know, Jackson is the president on the $20 bill. And I would just put, I would tape it down like obnoxiously. I would put so much tape on there, it really was hard to get it untaped. And I would put a bubble coming from Jackson's mouth and I would say, take me out for dinner or put me in your gas tank or, you know, like just cold, hard cash. And it wasn't, I didn't have a lot of money. I had to like take that out of the grocery bill, but I did it and they loved getting those snail mail letters because they would, I would say Jackson to Jackson on the outside so they knew there was a Jackson in there. So with my current son here, I just Venmo him a dollar every day. And then I just Venmo the dollar and it's just a reminder, my mom exists, like she's there somewhere. And so after I did these $10 for 10 days, my son called me, he was so excited. He goes, are we doing this for 365? <laughs> and I, I go, no, we're done. You get no more. But you know, it, it occurred to me, we could do 365. What if you did that? What if you Venmoed your kid a dollar for a year? It wouldn't hurt you that bad. It, it, he would love that. So Venmo him a dollar every day. Okay, so that's my thought. And then also just my other thought is get to know your kids' friends. Um, invite them to your cabin in Minnesota. Invite them to a Seahawks game in Washington. You know, these students, what I've noticed, we're very, we cover from the entire country. When you go to a, st a school, like a big state school from wherever you're from, it just pulls from right, a small circle. We, your kids are gonna get to know people from the whole country. And guess what? They're gonna travel the whole country to see them. So when it's your house they're coming to, spread those doors wide open and have a party and just and treat them like family because we are a family here at GCU. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk about is I love the analogy K Mag used with the with this sailor in the ocean with the waves and all of those type of things. Um, and I just wanted to talk about your child is going to hit waves when they're sailing the ocean. You know, like you guys made it to the ocean. You guys are at GCU. They're living their life. You know, those type of things. They're going to hit waves. Um, and I just want to say meet those waves with love and grace and not trying to tell them what to do, you know? 
not bossing them around saying, you need to do this, just meet that with like, okay, how are we going to work through this? Let them come to those, those, um, those terms by themselves type of thing. Because, um, you know, some waves are different for each, each student, you know. Some are bigger, some are smaller, those type of things. And then, you know, down the road, hopefully they meet someone with another boat and they start their own harbor, those type of things, you know. Um, but the biggest thing for me is, like, through those waves, um, you know, those waves have made me the person I am today. And without those, with, if my parents just flew on in their helicopters and saved me from those waves, I wouldn't be who I am today, and I wouldn't have learned the lessons I did here at GCU. So that was really important to me. So that's what I would say is just meet those waves with love and grace and be there for your student when they need you, but also give them that time to, you know, develop on their own and be there by themselves, yeah. So my final thoughts and words are something that I do feel that I did well. When my daughters all left home, um, as far as texting them was concerned, I decided that I was only going to text them one time a day. And so when I go to bed, I text each of my daughters and I say, good night so and so, I love you. And so a follow on to the story that I shared earlier. So after I felt like my world was falling apart yesterday afternoon, I texted my daughter last night and I said, good night so and so, I love you. Now, I don't usually expect my kids to text back. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, and I'm okay either way. But interestingly enough, she texted me back, and she said, thanks, Mom. She said, I was just really stressed today. I just want you to know that I love you and Daddy, and I appreciate that you're helping me go to school. Oh, my goodness, that meant so much to me. So just that one text message a day helps to build that trust and then they know that you're not all up in their business you're just going to let them kind of make those decisions that they're going to make and sometimes they will text back interestingly enough my other daughter texted me out of the blue today today's her 22nd birthday so i texted her this morning i did i i broke tradition wished her a happy birthday later she texted me today before i got here and she goes mom what's my driver's my my driver's license number and i'm like like your plate number? And she goes, yeah. And I'm like, you know, you can go outside and walk behind your car and write that down. But the fact of the matter is she reached out to me. She knew I would have the answer. And so I would just encourage you, don't be up in all their business all the time. Text them maybe once a day. Don't expect something in return. But you might be surprised when they do text back. That's hilarious. <laughs> just walk around the back. Um, Okay, so the last two days I've asked this question and I've literally had one answer every time. Anybody in here from South Dakota? Yes! This is so good. Hi, I'm from half South the Dakota. States here. This is so, yeah, half the state. It's one, two, three. That's us. <laughs> that, was, that was good. It was so good. Um, so the reason I asked that is because my story is. Um, really based on trust. Um, and I've been saying trust, but I added another word today and it was um, pride. So um, a couple uh, months ago, my daughter decided she wanted to move back to our home state, which is very far. I will not go, but she decided to go. And um, as she's leaving, she's, we're standing outside of her car. Um, we're hugging each other. We're obviously both bawling hysterically. I, I had her very young um, and I am a single parent. So it was like he was saying, you know, that new chapter of just like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Um, and we're hugging each other and all I could find myself saying to her um, in all of my hysteria was, I'm proud of myself and um, I know I did a good job. I trust that I did a good job and whatever you're gonna go do, you're gonna be okay because I know I did a good job. And in her hysteria, she responds and just to my heart, mom, you did a good job, I'm gonna be okay. So, oh, I've made it the last two days not crying. It might happen today. It might happen today. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. Um, but I can't stress that enough. So today, when you hug your kids, um, just have faith in, in and trust yourself. Be proud of yourself. You got them here. Not everybody goes to college, but you got them here. And trust that you've done everything, every lesson, every hard lesson, every grounding, everything you've had to put them through to this point. Um, trust yourself. Trust your kid. They're going to be okay. That's excellent. I'm from Montana, so there's only three more people in Montana than South okay. Dakota. So, uh, I, I, I think, Brittany, you have it well. 
Guys, I just want to let you know that when I dropped my daughter off her freshman year here, I cried too, and I work here. And I saw her twice a week instead of every day, and I still cried. So I'm not as tough as Mike. So, uh, but, uh, but Mike, I do have a single son. You had a single daughter. So we can, we can talk afterwards. So he has a diploma and a job. Um, for a millennial, that's success. But... Wait, K Mag, I think the in laws we were referencing earlier are right here, right? It wasn't out there, it was right here. Yeah, right yeah. There. Okay, forget it, guys. It's just right you here. want me to stop now? <laughs> um, when your student, you drop them off, you're going to go home. When, when they come back at Thanksgiving time or Christmas time, you're going to have a different human being walk into that door. Just be prepared for it. There's going to be some things that they may not, you may not like, but there's also going to be a lot of adult type behaviors going to say, wow, my son actually learned how to do laundry. Now he's still going to expect you to do it, but he has the knowledge and capacity, even though he doesn't have the will. Um, so, so, but you are going to have another, a new person come back and every year, every semester, they are going to be different. But never underestimate the fact that they still need you. They still need you. They still need a sounding board. They still need that. Even if that relationship might appear to be arm's length to you, they do still need you. And, and we, we just walk with that. And we walk with them with that. So you guys have done a great job. Thank you for all your work up to this point because you got your kid here. You did great, and I'm proud of you, and I'm glad that you're here today to, to experience a li just a little bit of triumph for your investment over the last years. You guys are awesome. I love these humans. Let's hear for this panel. You guys, there's three things I want to say. Number one, thank you. Thank you for doing such a phenomenal job and thank you for sending your student here so that we get to enjoy them and love on them and get to know them. Number two, we are honored to partner with you. We are honored to hopefully have gained some trust from you in the last hour and a half that we've spent together. And finally, welcome to our extended Lope family. So if you don't know this, we're going to count to three. And whenever you hear one, two, three, what do we do? Let's just, we say lopes up. So we're going to just practice that. Right? Should, should we stand? I feel like we should stand for this. Let's stand up. Yes. Yes. All right. Here we go. On three. Does that, now listen, it's not the hardcore rocker, okay? It's, yeah, yeah. Lip, lips out. On three. One, two, three. Good job. All right, stay on your feet. Stay on your feet. We're going to pray you out. Um, Todd Forrest. Thank you. Um, I take my parent hat off just a minute and put my instructor hat on. And whether it's English or in most of your students will take Christian worldview, we want to let you know as faculty that we love your students. This is not just a vocation or just merely a calling but we truly love your students, and we are dedicated to them. And, and from that side of it, I thank you also. It's just such a joy, and we're just, the lives that they share with us are just incredible. So thank you for that. Let's pray. Lord, I, I pray your blessing on each one of these parents for safe travels as they go home, for new nav navigating new life as they begin this new chapter in their lives. Lord, we pray for the students here that they would feel a sense of your presence, Lord Jesus, in their own personal lives, in their relationships, in their classes, in the environments that they put themselves in. Lord, we pray that you would just allow each family to stay close together as they navigate these new uncharted waters. And Lord, we know that we have you to turn to, and I pray your blessing on each one of them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
All right, we're a little bit over, so I won't keep you any longer. I will go ahead and dismiss you. However, um, remember that your students are in their orientation groups until about 2 or 2.30. So go explore the campus, stop by the Loeb shop, buy a thing for them, go to Target for them, stop by and see Robin at the pop-up, whatever it is you would like to do. We are here for you if you need anything. Thank you. Hotels are made for two night stays, checking in and out. Meeting strangers in the lobby, waking up and leaving town the next day. But love ain't. And whiskey's poured for waiting.